It's lovely, as you say, though, Richard, to see the youngsters here again. I think that's what English football is all about, especially at Wembley. Wembley final is tremendous because it does bring the family out again and they can come and enjoy themselves and have a good day, a good day and, uh, and enjoy it. And I think that's tremendous to see. Just pause for a moment to listen to the reception for these two. Now, this is, this is when the butterflies start, isn't it? Yes, you certainly, right. you certainly feel it when you come up the top of that tunnel, don't you? Well, that's right. As soon as that, as soon as that roar hits you, you yeah. feel, God, let me get over there quickly. Let me get this handshaking bit done. Let's get the, the anthems out of here and give me a ball to kick or a head or do something with. But players, really, they don't like this bit. I always remember in 76 when we played the Southampton when we were in the final against United. We walked out and we saw a few of the United players and they were dreading playing. And then we had guys like Jimmy McCallie, Ogden Self, Shannon and Peter Rodriguez who had been and done it before. And we were just uh, like these crowd and enjoyed the occasion and we certainly did. And uh, they do freeze, don't they, some oh. players? You know, even before this bit, before the actual walk, um, there's five, six, seven minutes when the players are in the tunnel when we don't see them. And you're there, you know, you're looking at, uh, you're, you're lined up maybe a yard away from the guy you've got to battle with in, in the next 10 minutes or so. And you're looking, well, is it, oh, he looks nervous. Oh, I'm going to have him this afternoon. You know, and all things are going through your mind. Players, players don't like this. They want to get the, the handshake a bit done, as I said. I was just looking at Cluffy there, very sharp suit, no gimmicks. He had, of course, the, the world's greatest granddad was it, didn't he, before the what's the, what's the odds on, though, Richard, that uh, after the presentations, the team were warming up, he'd disappear behind in that tunnel there. He would disappear and come out with his green top on <laughs> and his blue tracks at bottom. What odds on that, I wonder? <laughs> I mean, Cluffy. He's Cluffy. Isn't he? Yes, he's a great man. We, we all respect him. Anybody that's played the game, and uh, anybody that still plays the game, I think... Uh, if you say you love him or hate him, but most people do love him. He's a tremendous character, and uh, it's, it's lovely to see him there and still doing well. He would, he would certainly be, uh, he would certainly be a hard act to follow if and whenever he decides to retire. I wouldn't like to be the one to follow him. That's for sure. Well, we hear week in, week out different things, don't we? The last I thought was that he said he'd stay on and have another go at the FA Cup next year. The presentations, a few handshakes, as you said. Down the lines we go. Mr. Joe Solari, incidentally, that is Larry, president yeah. of Zenith Data Systems Europe. Yeah, well, he's just shaking hands there with the young goalkeeper, Andrew Marriott. Bless him. He's come in for the last uh, two games after the bit of hassle with Mark Crossley had his, in uh, his hometown of Bars Barnsley. But that young man, he's, uh, he's a lucky man, but I'm certain he's one that's going to enjoy the You'll this know afternoon. how he'll feel. You, you played in 78 against Liverpool with Chris Woods in goal. Uh, Here. There you go. And all week I've been, I've been saying I think Clough will pl play young Marriott in goals, but because I go back to 78, there was a young goalkeeper, uh, Chris Woods, she opened his cup tied, so they threw this young boy in be behind us, and he played exceptionally well. Played more than exceptionally well, yeah. didn't he, to be fair? Well, yeah, he made, he made one or two saves, but uh, Kenny Burns himself kept him yeah, out. Yeah, I'm sure that was the case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> And Southampton, Peter. Tim Flowers has been an important part of their season. He's done tremendously well for them, yes. And, uh, and guys like Barry Horn, for me, and uh, the workhorse in the team, don't get a lot of credit, but uh, they're the sort of guys you want around. And obviously, you've got the flair guys up front, uh, Shearer, and uh, obviously Matt would be last somewhere there. But uh, Kevin Moore's coming and done ever so well, and there's Matt, but he looks like he's going to enjoy himself. I hope he performs. Yes, we certainly He do. disappoints sometimes, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, but uh, he, he's, they've had a lot of problems at the club, and uh, I, I think there's been a bit of an internal rowing going on, but I think they've got it together now, and I'm sure they'll put it behind them today, and uh, I'm sure they'll have to turn it on for us. Right, well, we'll pause a moment or so for the national anthems. Peter, briefly, you're on the Saints? I uh, certainly am, yes. Larry? Well, it's got to be fast. What? And quite comfortably, I think. Do you? Yes. <laughs> bigger than me, Peter. I'm not going to argue with him either now. <laughs> well, I'm not going to catch up and face in Nottingham tonight if I don't say that. <laughs> Let's pause for the National Anthems. Wembley final of the season, the Zenith Data Systems Cup.
Forest against Southampton. It's live here on Sky Sports. Match commentators Ron Atkinson and Peter Bradley. A very good afternoon to you on this memorable Wembley day out then for players and supporters alike. A much maligned competition in some quarters, but what professional footballer, I wonder, wouldn't happily swap places with those lucky enough to be on centre stage today. So let's take a look then at the two lineups, starting with the Nottingham Forest side. In goal, young Andy Marriott, preferred then to Mark Crossley. Two, Gary Charles, the one fitness down in the side, that's been cleared up. Three, the incomparable Stuart Pearce, the Iron Man of Forest. Four, his England teammate Des Walker. Five is Darren Walsall, his first Wembley final. Six, Roy Keane, an excellent season for the young Irishman. Seven, Gary Crosby. Eight, Scott Gennell, his first Wembley final too. Nine, the son of Brian, Nigel Clough. Ten, another Wembley debutant, Teddy Sheringham. And eleven, Kingsley Black. Well, alongside me in the commentary box then is Ron Atkinson. So, Ron, your thoughts on how the Forest side will be shaping up. Yes, it will be their tried and trusted lineup. Uh, flat back four, uh, four across midfield with Crosby and Black working the, the flanks up and down. Clough tucked in just behind Sheringham. It's a system that they, they've used for year in, year out. Only thing I wonder about looking at it is there a shortage of height at the back, particularly with a young goalkeeper. I just wonder whether people like Ruddick may exploit that a little bit on set plays, Peter. Right, let's check then on the Southampton side. A goal, Tim Flowers, two, Jeff Kenner, another young Irishman, three, Francis Benali, four, Barry Horn, five, Kevin Moore, 33 years old now, six, Neil Ruddock, hopefully his disciplinary problems are behind him, seven, the enigmatic Matt Letizier, back in favour today with Michael Jukes, cup tied, eight is Glenn Cockerell, the club captain, nine, Alan Shearer, so much resting then on his young shoulders, ten, Ian Dowie, and eleven, Terry Herlock, who's the only Saint to have featured in a major cup final here before. That was from Brentford against Wigan in the Freight Rover Trophy. Ron. Yes, I think they've got a few problems, bearing in mind they've got no natural left-sided player, uh, attacking-wise, that is. Um, back four, OK, Moore and Ruddock, both left-sided defenders, but experienced and competent. Um, I just wonder how the absence of Adams is going to affect them there. It looks as if we, we feel Horn will probably try and sit on uh, Clough. I just wonder whether Dowie may be asked to work up and down the left-hand side a little bit more than partner Shearer. Perhaps leave Shearer a little bit alone on, it, uh, on through the middle and Letizia filling in the right-hand side. Right, well, we're ready then for the toss-up, so let's join Nick Collins down there, Nick. Well, Stuart Pearce has the coin, and I can tell you that uh, Keith Hackett has given him a 1950 two-shilling bet. They've tossed up. Who's won the toss? Uh... Toss. Stuart Pierce has won the toss for Nottingham Forest and we'll tell you any moment and he's electing to stay put so Nottingham Forest will defend the goal with which their fans are behind Christ of course the old hands their fifth Wembley appearance now then in four astonishing seasons the referee today Keith Hackett from Sheffield a very experienced official he took charge of the FA Cup Finals back in 1981, Spurs and Manchester City, that went to a replay, of course. And uh, it was also Keith who took charge of the semi-final of the FA Cup last season when Forrest went through against West Ham and he sent off Tony Gale. So I suppose uh, he endeared himself to Forrest supporters that day anyway. So we're all set then for the start of the 1992 Zenith Cup Final. Southampton in their change strip, all blue. Forrest won the right to wear their normal strip. Southampton had choice of dressing room here today. Southampton to kick off. Two teams who have impressed so much in cup football this season. And two sides with honours even two so far. Forrest knocked Saints out of the Rumbelow's Cup at the second attempt, but lost at home to them in the league. And let's hope the teams can relax today and turn on a showpiece to match the occasion. The pitch, as ever, in immaculate condition, but there has been a lot of heavy rain here especially in the last few hours so as the uh, lads have been saying in the studio I think it's going to be rather greasy on top but so often that makes for even more excitement in towards Dowie but Wassell was there sharing up header now Kingsley Black Pat Pierce in support now here's Nigel Clough away by Cockrell in search of Shearer, who's being tightly shadowed already, of course, by Des Walker. 
What a confrontation run that promises to be, Shearer and Walker there. Yes, very much so. Um, Shearer, lone range of battles um, against possibly the quickest defender in the first division. Interesting to see, I was wondering how they'd fill in the left-hand space. Well, it looks at the moment as if Leticia is going to play on that side of the field. And now he's going to stay right up front alongside Shearer. Here's Stuart Pearce. And it's a free kick to Nottingham Forest. Four straight successes now in the league. And Southampton have had a good run too. They've only lost a couple in their last 17. Both of those indeed to Norwich. And Southampton have certainly tightened up defensively lately. Indeed, that's coincided with the return to the side of Kevin Moore, the veteran defender who'd been out on loan to Bristol Rovers. And since he's come back, well, things have been a lot more secure defensively for a team struggling down near the foot of the table. And of course, their priority this season remains Southampton to avoid the drop. Shearer. A wake up Forest though, but not too far. Cockerell with a punch it tackle then on Stuart Pierce. Plenty of aggression in the Southampton side, something they've rather overdone this season with 66 bookings and five sendings off. So they've got an appalling disciplinary record, it has to be said, Southampton. But nonetheless, Ron, they have individuals who can turn this game. Yes, well, we keep talking about the two on top, uh, of course, Shearer and Letizia. I mean, every time I see them, they all seem to produce um, both outstanding talents. A lot of talk as well when we were suggesting that uh, Horn may sit out and pick up uh, Nigel Clough. We've just seen Ruddock get drawn onto him there and, and have quite a few problems. I don't think Ruddock's going to be very happy if he has to drop out from the back line to try and pick up Clough. Ruddock's better being the last man organising things. Sheringham. Good interception though by Herlock, who was fouled and Keith Hackett had already blown the whistle, so there was no advantage to be accepted there by Southampton. But a tigerish challenge by Terry Herlock, who again is going to be a key man in the midfield area, along with Barry Horn. Ronick has got forward. Kenner's free kick. And the header safely gathered by Andy Marriott. Yes, I think that's an area where Southampton are going to give uh, Forrest a lot of problems. Probably would represent possibly their best chance of scoring today they are very very effective they've got big people the shearer they're getting right on top of uh, charles for the header but they've got big people who can come up and uh, make things happen and also the fact they've got this uh, this boomerang throw of uh, ruddocks he can virtually hurl it to the far post yes he has a prodigious long throw neil ruddock and it's a very effective part of southampton's armory up towards dowie who's been scoring some vital goals lately match-winning goals in league games that have given Southampton a lifeline in their efforts to stay in the top flight this is Charles for Nottingham Forest Clough, delicate layoff then, in goes Cockerell now Hurlock getting forward, whistle's gone though Marriott makes the save anyway, which won't do his confidence any harm now, Stuart Pearce may well have a problem here. There's no tougher defender around than Pearce, so you can rest assured that he's injured if he stayed down. There'll be no feigning from this fellow. Magnificent leader he has been for Nottingham Forest in recent seasons, Stuart Pearce. And of course, captain of England too in the week. For the international in Czechoslovakia. Yes, there'll be a few wingers looking at that picture now enjoying it, won't they? Stuart Pearce having treatment for it. An injury and a tackle. He's sorted one or two out down the years. He's sorted one or two out most matches, never mind down the years. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Glenn Cockerell's challenge. I think Cockerell better keep uh, his eyes open for Stuart Pierce being around from now on. Now Ruddock. For Southampton, who started fairly confidently. No sign of any real nerves for them so far. Kenner overhitting his pass, though, young Jeff Kenner. Yes, all the talk about the midfield, the Southampton midfield, what the job Horn was going to do. It looks as if uh, 
Ian Bramford single out Roy Keane and probably rightly so is the danger man and Horn's looking very much to do a one-to-one -one job on him it would worry me a little bit that they're, they're allowing their back four players to deal with Nigel Clough because I think that uh, with all due respect to, to Ruddock and uh, Kevin Moore neither of them are particularly mobile Shearer who most certainly is mobile such an athletic player Alan Shearer what a prospect he is now Stuart Pearce Here's Clough pulling the strings, on for Gemmel. Breaking so quickly from midfield, sharing him now. And Gemmel going on. And it was Horn with a covering tackle. Well read that by Barry Horn. He's been in tremendous form lately for Southampton. And he certainly needed to be at his most alert then. Gary Charles towards Wassel and sharing up with a header. Yes, he caught Southampton napping and the little short corner, this, all the Southampton defenders have turned the back and gone into the middle of the box and they've taken a little short corner there between Charles and Crosby and Sheringham there perhaps will feel he might have done better. Sheringham with 20 goals for Nottingham Forest this season. Including a couple in the Zenith Cup. Against Leeds too, I remember, one of the early matches that we covered in the competition. Yeah, he's also, we talk about him as a goal scorer, you know, he's a very, very integral part of um, Forest attacking build -up because, as we saw there, they play into him an awful lot. And then it's the, his job to make sure he retains possession for the midfield. Flags up, offside. Letizia hasn't seen the flag. Well, that was the, that was the outcome of a sheer flick, and that's, that's the problem area, I think, for Forest today. As Larry Lloyd said earlier, they are quick, mobile and agile. Uh, Wassell and Walker, but they do have that slight, slight problem in the air. Now, Steve Chettle is going through his paces here, and I would think there's a very strong chance that Stuart Pearce is going to have to come off. So, what a hammer blow that would be for Nottingham Forest to lose their captain. He's certainly been struggling. I'm sure he'll do his best to run it off. But they're warming up Steve Chettle, a very versatile player, just in case he can't continue. Now, what about that, Ron? Well, that's a shock, isn't it? I mean, if it, if, whether it's something he was, he was carrying before the game, maybe it's something a legacy from the international. I mean, it was a firm challenge of Cockrell's early on, but it wouldn't have appeared to have done the sort of damage that would make Stuart Pearce come off the field. Dowie. Here's Herlock. Now then to Kenner. Towards Dowie. It was a brave header out by Wassell, and it was a foul anyway. So Brian Clough with some thinking to do. And he'll certainly be keeping uh, a very careful eye on the progress of Stuart Pearce over the next few minutes. Can ill afford to lose him. This is Charles. Andy Marriott, who's kept two clean sheets in the two games he's played. And Brian Clough deciding there was no Wembley place today for Mark Crossley, who's been in problems, or having problems off the field, of course. Much publicised. So Marriott's come in and he's clearly done a good, good enough job in the last two games to warrant his selection today. Pierce, up jumping Cockerell. He's still looking a little pain at Stuart Pierce. but no sign yet of a switch being made. I see Liam Kane, uh, the trainer, looks as if he's going to come round to Pierce's side of the field, maybe just to get a check on him. As Walker showing his tremendous pace, how quickly he hit up the ground there. Charles with the interception, and there's nobody upfield at all for Forrest. You'll not see that happening very much. I don't think the manager will like that too much. Charles just welling the thing upfield. I mean, that's something that's ingrained to all Forest players. Looks as if we're getting flat there straight away. <laughs> it's ingrained to them. Like, wherever you are, you keep possession, you pass. Yes, that's not the Forest style to simply hoof it upfield. Intricate cap patterns, it's uh, all their way of doing things. Of course, they've delighted us this season and over recent season with the quality of their football forest. Much of it around this fellow, Nigel Clark. Now Keane. 
What a revelation he has been for Nottingham Forest. Sheringham. There's Crosby. Maybe a first chance for him to shine in this game so far, but Benali there with a thunderous tackle on Gary Charles. But he saw in the earlier part of that build-up, Peter, just how important Sheringham is to them. He holds the ball up to enable uh, attacking midfield players or even the full-backs to get forward. Keane almost got away that from Benali. Yes, Teddy Sheringham has had to adapt to the Forest style. But he's done that to a really good effect this season since his move from Millwall. And of course, he uh, played at Millwall with Terry Herlock in the Southampton side. And also uh, Steve Wood, who's on the bench for Southampton today. So we'll know all about them. Clough with Horn. And Kevin Moore hoisting it forward. Right fall for Dowie. So Leticia was there too. And there's the danger that Leticia poses. <laughs> that was a remarkable sh shot. You, here you see them winning the heading duel. And I mean, so laid back. And he's hit a tremendous left foot volley there that uh, Marriott's made quite a useful save on. It was such a nonchalant effort. <laughs> yeah, it was the sort of thing you would look <laughs> as if he was doing on, in a five-a-side before training or whatever. Might not a Wembley Cup final. Well, he's an astonishing player, Matthew Letizia. Only he can just find that level of consistency that he needs. Of course, he's been very consistent in this competition in terms of goal scoring. Six Zenith Cup goals in the campaign, including four against Chelsea in the area final. Three of them in one game, the second leg. But again, Brantford dropped him after his sending off in the FA Cup tie against Norwich. Left him out against Luton. So he's certainly been uh, in and out of favour with the manager all season. It must be frustrating, Ron, you would know this as a manager, to have a player who you can see the talent that he has, but he just doesn't always produce it. Oh, yeah, it would drive you up the wall, but, I mean, as a neutral, you love him to have the ball. You love to come and see games he's playing in. But I can imagine sometimes the problems that uh, his, own, his own manager will have with him. But I will say this for him, he does weigh in most years with a fair total of goals. There's the TCA now. Chasing with Charles. So Southampton so far, certainly by no means overawed by the occasion. No, it's one of those performances when you play for us. You do, you can get lulled a little bit because they do, they, ha they are having most of the play territorial at the Southampton. But that sometimes suits for us to try and catch the opposition on the break. This is Jeff Kenner taking the throw then for Southampton no score so far Shearer losing out Des Walker one of England's few successes really at the international against Czechoslovakia Des Walker now bursting forward sharing him Walker's onto the return he's got three in the middle and Benali just whisking away then as Crosby came in that was magnificent football from Forrest, particularly by Des Walker. I mean, he's scored, what's he scored? One goal in about the last six or seven years. And yet looked very, very comfortable coming forward there. In towards Keane. Falls it for Gemmell! Oh, yes! Magnificent strike by Scott Gemmell! And Nottingham Forest go in front. Scott Gemmell on his first Wembley appearance. In a cup final, delights his manager, Brian Clough. And that was a spacking effort there. Keane wins it here. And there's the effort from Scott Kemmel. Well, that's finishing of the highest order, isn't it? And nice and composed, gets himself in a good shape. Just takes one touch. We saw, we saw uh, Letizia a few minutes earlier strike a similar sort of a shot. Then we see Gemmel put them in the, in the lead with a, with a brilliant, a brilliant volley back. Absolutely brilliant. 15 minutes gone, it's Nottingham Forest 1, Southampton 0, and Scott Gemmel's ninth goal of the season. It's also noticeable when the goal took place, Pearce went straight over to the bench, and I think that switch is going to be made, Peter. 
Dowie knocks it down. Shearer on the turn. As Hampton looked to bounce straight back. As Pierce is absolutely, he, he's got to come off. There's no way of staying now. Herlock. Barry Horn. And Horn's got a pretty lethal shot from long range, as Bolton will testify. He scored a superb goal against them in the FA Cup recently. Indeed, he got uh, two goals for Southampton that day as they went through. Scott Gemmell, the goal scorer. He's really brought this final to life now. Here's Crosby. Forrest visibly lifted by the goal. Young Scott Gemmell, son of course of Archie Gemmell on the uh, Forest coaching staff one of their great names from the past and now Steve Chettle is coming on and Stuart Pearce is going off he's getting a tremendous reception as you'd imagine from the Forest fans I don't think Southampton will be too displeased to see him go off but uh, it's a real blow for Forest and of course for Stuart Pearce the Forest captain so on comes Steve Chettle playing rather more of the final than he would have anticipated. Charles now. Devil again! Oh, great save by Flowers. Kingsley Black, the flag's up now. But Gavel so close then to a second goal. And Southampton rescued by the agility of Tim Flowers. Just once again made by, by a defender coming forward. Thought he was a little bit vigorous there, Charles, with his challenge, but he sets the ball back in the path of Gemmel here. And as you said, tremendous save from Flowers. What a reflex action then shown by Tip Flowers, who's had a really consistent season behind often a troubled defence too. They were leaking goals all over the place earlier on in the season. But Tim Flowers maintained his consistency. And really it's his goalkeeping that's given them a chance of staying up in the first division and indeed brought them as far as they have in cup competitions and he certainly saved his team then as Stuart Pierce, disconsolate figure, makes his way down the tunnel I think some of the Forest lads, uh, Keane and Gemmell in particular, have started to realise now that uh, Southampton, or the heart of the defence, isn't particularly quick and when they get their passing game going and supporting from midfield, it, it could be made to measure for them Chattel will be intended through pass. Benali was there. Well, we can look again here at the uh, goal scored by Scott Gemmell. One what? there by Keane in the air. And how's that for a finish by Scott Gemmell? Tremendous goal. Now off goes Shearer. Now the whistle's gone. Keith Hackett will bring play back for a free kick to Nottingham Forest. Alan Shearer with 19 goals for Southampton in this difficult season for them. Shangham with more. It's Kingsley Black. Got away from two challenges there. One of them from the combative figure of Terry Hurlock. The TCA now switching to the right. Yeah, I wonder whether he's been put over here deliberately to try and test Chettel. Or whether it's just in the pattern of play, he's just drifted across. But it may very well be that they've decided to try a chattel early. Well, that tackle was in the Stuart Pierce mode. Steve Chattel, who's played a prominent role in Forest's success in recent seasons, but has had to fight for his place this time around. He's not a stranger to a fullback position. He, he spent a long time, didn't he, one season, he playing right back for them. Yes, although a left-footed player, he did have that right-back slot for quite some time. But now, filling in for Stuart Pearce on the left. Kenner with a cross, drilled in. Keane only half-cleared it. There's Letizia. Forrest struggling to get it away. Eventually they do. But only as far as Benali. Now then for Dowie. Letizia is in the middle. Walker was there, and rather slashed his clearance. Southampton at the moment seem to have got their teeth drawn. You know, the goal down, they've sensed Pierce going off, and this, this looks a big, big spell for them at the moment. And this is a situation where I've 
you know, I've, uh, I've predicted that they may very well punish um, Forrest. And they're so anxious to show Southampton that they can play as well as scrap. Oof. Well, that was Roddick in there. I think the whistle had gone anyway. Letizia just chipping it in. Difficult to see a free kick there, wasn't it? It looked a little bit of... In actual fact, it looked like one of the Forest defenders uh, grappling with a, a Southampton player. The Southampton certainly not lying down here. Letizia. In goes Hurlock. Now that for Shearer. Walker inevitably is with him. There's Kenner, the early ball in search of Shearer. Shearer pulls it back well too, and Roy Keane was there. Yes, that was good football from Southampton. But back and through, lovely through ball from the right full back, Kenner. But once again, this is the sort of situation, this is what they need, Southampton. They need to apply pressure. They need to work, work the Forest defence, particularly, uh, as I say, aerially. Well, there's only one Southampton player in the six-yard box, the rest making their attack from further out. There was more, and Marriott with a comfortable save. A nerve-wracking occasion for Andy Marriott, but so far, he's standing up to the test well. It's been good for him as well, because he's had a fair bit to do without having anything that uh, can jangle the nerves a little bit. He's been involved. He's made one very good stop from um, Letizia, and generally he's, he's, been, he's been worked. Nottingham lad, he's only 21. Andy Marriott came from Arsenal a couple of years ago, and he's had loan spells out with Blackburn and Colchester and Bo uh, Burnley. But I'm sure a few weeks ago he had to, uh, kept to playing in this final. And of course, the Rumbelows final coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Player strike permitting. <laughs> Safely through to Tim Flowers. Southampton just beginning to get a grip on the game now. Albeit from behind after that goal from Scott Gemmell early on. Across comes Des Walker. Scored an own goal here, of course, in the FA Cup final defeat by Tottenham last season. Now, is this going to be a long throw in by Jeff Kenner? Not long enough. Chettle was there. Kenner again. We've got plenty of players forward here, Southampton. One of them then was Cockerell. Wassel, though, out jumping Shearer. Ruddock back in. Here's Dowie now. Trying to turn them. Just no space for them to find any room there. Really congested just outside that Forest 18 yard box. They've got everybody back defending Forest. And then a rather sloppy pass from Kevin Moore, and it all comes to nothing. Yes, one of the things that Southampton will know they can do is when a ball comes out to them, when they've had uh, Forrest under pressure, is loaded straight back in, because Forrest are not the sort of team that most teams will clear the penalty box and try and catch people offside. Forrest will stay in there and keep numbers in there, and that does give them a chance to, a chance to build up some pressure, Southampton. Kenner just got it before Teddy Sheringham. Jeff Kenner, who's in the side really because of Jason Dodd being out through injury. And in fairness to Kenner, he kept him out of the team anyway for a while when Dodd was out of favour. 20 minutes of the first half to go. Horn. Now this is Benali. Won't find Shearer though, because Walker is there. Very robust challenge then by Benali that has left Crosby off the ground. Looked a bit cumbersome, Rom. Yes, but it actually has been a very, very competitive game. It hasn't been one of those. Sometimes you see this final and it can be a little bit slow tempo. This has been a high tempo game. 
Yes, he's, he's probably left his left leg in a little bit more than he, probably the uh, the lad have wanted him to have done. Here's Clough. Trying to shake off Roddick, which wasn't too easy. <laughs> Neil Roddick, who certainly had his problems this season. Three suspensions. He's had a couple of settings off, and of course he was left out and indeed put on the transfer list by Southampton earlier in the campaign, but he's battled his way back again. Here's Kemmel. Excellent skill by him, and then the cross just too long for Sheringham. Letizia. In towards Shearer, found him superbly. Dowie now. Here's Cockrell. Born finding Letizia. In towards Shearer, but Walker to covered that one. There's Keane getting into trouble. And that might have ricocheted into the part of Shearer then. So Forrest just a little sloppy at the back. Here's Keane. Sheringham. Given away though by Gary Charles. As the Forest passing machine for once breaks down. Shearer now. Listen, I think what's happening at the moment is Southampton midfield players are, are trying to hustle Forrest out of their stride. Every time a red shirt gets the ball, straight away a Southampton player, the first player flies at him and tries to put him under pressure. Well, it's certainly a feature of their game to close teams down, but on the wide open spaces of Wembley, you'd think it would be much harder for them than it normally is. Yes, but most of the game is actually be, being played, isn't it, from the halfway line towards Forrest's uh, goal. I mean, they're condensing the game very much, our uh, Southampton. And Forrest, for the moment, are being picked back here. There's Walker. Now Ruddock for Southampton. Letizia. Well, it was neat skill initially, and then he gave it away. Kingsley Black. Here's Gemmell, the goal scorer, to Nigel Clough, who's certainly been a goal scorer in the past at Wembley. And he was caught then by that tenacious tackle by Terry Hurl. And that's going to earn him a rebuke, to say the least, from uh, Keith Hackett. Possibly a booking, no, just a warning this time. I think he probably took into account here that to a certain extent, Nigel Clough teased him a little bit. Yeah, it was overzealous. Possibly on another day would have got a booking, but I think Nigel Clough invited it a little bit. Well, Nigel, son of the manager, seems to be okay. Another vital cog in the forest machine. Well, he is today, particularly with Pierce going off, isn't he? It's, there's, a, there's a big onus now on him and uh, Des Walker. You know, they, they're the recognised experienced players in the side. Gary Charles, plastic through, to plan the shot to match, though. Gary Charles, who'd been a doubt earlier in the week because of injury, but he came through a late test, and also keeping Brian Laws out of the Forest side at the moment. But Ian Bradford will be fairly pleased, I would think, with the way his team have battled back here after the setback of conceding the early goal. Certainly their fans are in good voice. Big following here for both teams. Chettle. Demo with Clough. That's a lovely layoff in from Clough. Now Keane. This is where Forrest were their most dangerous. Keane going on. And away comes Roddick. Now is the counter attack on for Southampton here. Dowie. Letizia. Now for Herlock. Dowie trying to win it in the air. A little tussle with Wassel. Keith Hackett nearby. Just says, get on with it, lads. <laughs> Ian Bradford, whose team were certainly the underdogs beforehand for this final. And apart from being a goal down, they've otherwise given a good account of themselves so far. 
They're very much in this final. And can they find a way to break down this Forest rear guard built around Des Walker? Russell challenged by Dowie. There's Kevin Moore. I doubt if he thought he'd be playing in this final a few weeks ago either. He was on loan to Bristol Rovers. It seemed that his Southampton career was certainly nearing its end, but he's come back and he's done very well. And they've needed him to Southampton with Steve Wood being out through injury. He's only just come back today, really, on the bench. And also Richard Hall on the injured list. There's Kevin Moore. Yes, when you start to look around the Southampton side, particularly in the midfield area, um, you see some players in the veteran stage, don't you? Herlock, Cockrell, Horn just approaching it, and you just wonder because they are playing, they are playing very much a high tempo game in midfield. The uh, Saints midfield players, whether at, you know in the big open spaces of Wembley, particularly if Forest just keep control and pass the ball around, whether in fact uh, later in the game that might have an effect on them. Steve Chapel. Now then for Clough. Good anticipation though by Kevin Moore. The old hand at the back for Southampton. But now Clough feeding Crosby. He's got Keaton through the middle. Still Crosby who's full of tricks. But nothing doing this time. Now the whistle has gone. The lines would have spotted something. And I think... Uh, it was Crosby, the offender. It is noticeable, though, isn't it? Every time Forrest put together a little pattern of pat play, a few passes together, how often Keane seems to be sprinting over the backside of uh, Southampton defence. As of yet, I think they've only spotted him in once, but uh, that's always a threat. Benali. Walker with a header away. Now Charles pumping it forward for Cheringham to chase but Kevin Moore was there now Charles showed too much of that though to Cockerell and that will be a throw to Forrest which Crosby takes quickly too quickly though for Teddy Sheringham and the ball is back with Tim Flowers now Larry Lloyd watching in the studio there what about the way that uh, Forrest are coping now without Stuart Pearce, Larry? Well, obviously a big blow, Peter, to lose, uh, to lose Stuart Pearce, but in Steve Chettle, they've got a natural replacement. He is a central defender, but he's got one hell of a good left foot. But I'm surprised, actually, that Pearce was limping for a good ten minutes. Why didn't they stick Letizia across on Pearce to give him a real test? Well, they've moved him across now, but uh, Steve Chettle is the man he's facing. And, yeah, he seems to be coping OK so far. I can't remember Larry Lloyd switching to left back too often, Ron, can you? I can remember him giving a few people a test, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gary Charles. Now then for Wassell, who had an anxious week wondering whether he was going to be in the starting lineup or not. But of course, Carl Tyler waiting in the wings. Tyler, the big money signing. But not in the 13 today. Wassell hanging on to his place. And that's a reward for some outstanding displays of late down Wassell for Nottingham Forest. Done very well alongside Des Walker. So often in the past, his understudy. But now lining up alongside him. Des Walker finding Kingsley Black, who hasn't made a big impression so far in this game. They kept him fairly quiet. Letizia finding Horn into towards Shearer, who's so quick off the mark. And Russell keeping a very careful eye on it. Yes, nice football. Two passes, two nice passes there. Letizia and uh, Horn. Nice little balls down the side. I think Shearer was actually starting to pull away to the uh, far post before realising it that the pass was coming his way. Now Herlock to Letizia. Always a buzz when Letizia has the ball. And towards Dowie. Difficult ball for Wassel to deal with. 
and he coped pretty well. Cockerell's tackle on Gary Charles. Keith Hackett waving Southampton on. Horn now towards Letizia. It's Shearer. No let up in the pace. Right key. Wanting support, he's found it now is Sheringham. It's an excellent pass too. The Kemmel. Sheringham again. He's got black outside it. Got four up in this attack now. Kingsley Black. Gemmel didn't make it because Benali was there. Now Chetwood. This is Clough. Brought for Southampton. Letizia, and that was just too long then for Shearer. He does try that one, doesn't he, Letizia? He, he can hit the ball a fair distance very accurately, and Letizia just pulling off the back of Des Walker, then almost a very, very good ball. But the move a little bit earlier, Forrest, was poetry, wasn't it? That, for me, is the best move of the game, actually, Peter. Some lovely one-touch passing, link-up play, midfield players running past the ball. Well, it was typical Forest, and they are such a delight to watch when they're in that kind of mood. And rest assured, as long as Brian Clough is in charge, they won't change the way they play. Ruddock, with oh, the early ball, almost to see Forrest sent Gemmell, let it run through. Keane, now Gemmell to Sheringham. One of the warning signs were out for Southampton then, but Horn has pulled it all. At least I thought he had, off goes Crosby now. Sheringham's up with him, but also Black here. And that was an important tackle by Kenner. Keane. Good running by Gemmell. He's got Clough now in support. Now then for Crosby. Sheringham with a chance to cross it in perhaps. But Charles can. Flags up, offside. Wouldn't have counted. Keane was caught. And probably Kingsley Black as well. Yes, that's something Southampton do uh, without thinking virtually. As soon as the ball is in a wide position, the opposition has the, has the ball in a wide position and turn it back. They step up very, very quickly to the 18-yard line. I'll tell you what, Ron, it's a good final, isn't it? It is a good final. Yes, it is. I would say that. I mean, and we've done the last three or four of these, Peter, and this wrench with any of them. Because it's got, it's got a great competitive edge. A lot of goals, too, in previous games. 28 in the six previous finals of this competition. So let's hope we get some more today, too. Herlock. And Marriott on his battle as Letizia came into challenge. I mean, there was, we were talking about when Chris Woods played in that game in 78, uh, wasn't it, against Liverpool. He had an awful lot of balls like this. You know, they're good for him. They, you know, he can, he can get involved in the game. And, you know, he, they, goalkeepers will get bedded down like that. He's looked very confident so far. As Andy Marriott at goal for Nottingham Forest. A 21-year-old who's only just come into the side. Now, another test here for Southampton, perhaps. Forest have the free kick. Russell is making his way forward. Sheffel and Gemmel organising the set piece. Gary Charles. Oh, delicately on for Sheringham. And now then for Clough. This is the second. Agonisingly close. Another great build up then by Forrest. And Clough so nearly finished it off. Yes, I mean, this is a lovely flighty ball from uh, Charles. But there we see the value, nice little header down. Knew what he was doing there, Sheringham. And Clough, I mean, we're, we're sitting right behind that shot. Knew the bet money was flying straight in, just off the inside of the post. Yes, I'll be disappointed there, Nigel Clough. Although it was an intricate, excellent build-up. He knows he should have chucked that one away. Yes, I think every time Forrest attack, there's always a threat about them. You always sense something's going to happen. You know, they've got they've got good ideas. Yeah. 
Letizia. Bought by Kraft, but a fair challenge. Keith Hackett only a few yards away, so he had a perfect view of that one. Sheringham now. He's having a very good game so far, Teddy Sheringham. Charles has given it away to Horn. Shearer. Now Letizia benefiting from Cockerell's tackle. And, well, Dowie needed a better service than that. Letizia turning away in disgust. With himself, of course. Now, Kingsley Black. He's sharing up. Plenty of free-flowing, enterprising football from both sides. Here's Kegel now. Well, he just spotted the opening then. To be fair to that lad, I think he's been the outstanding player on the field. I mean, he deserved the goal, brilliantly taken goal, but his industry and involvement has been top draw. He played for the Scottish under-21s in the week. Came on as a sub, in fact, uh, in the match against Germany, and they were 3-1 down, and he helped turn things around. They eventually won 4-3. So he certainly uh, was an influence on that game. And he has been again today. The only goal so far... Part of some of Forrest's best moves. That's Keaton with a header over. Another man who's made dramatic strides in the past couple of seasons, Roy Keane. Yes, of course, got the winner against Tottenham in the uh, the Rumbelow semi-final. That's right. I mean, he, he has got tremendous ability in the air. I mean, we, we think of him as a running, thrusting player from midfield, but he does seem to be their outstanding strike header as well. Yes, those two vital goals against. Tranmere in one of the earlier rounds. Forest clinching their place in this final by beating Leicester in the area final. Southampton came through against Chelsea. Barry Horn now. Sheared up. Now Kenner in towards Dowie, who was useful in the air. But the attentions of Tess Walker were enough to put him off in, I think. Yes, I still think he had long enough time in the air to adjust on that. I would have, I would have fancied Dowie to have kept that one in the penalty box. He's taken his time to uh, win over the Southampton fans, but he certainly has in recent weeks with the goals that he's scored. Now, there's that long throw we were talking about earlier from Rudder, and it was a very long one. More, I think it was, who got the header on, and Shearer almost applied the finishing touch. Well, maybe it wasn't to Moore who made the header because Keith Hackett has given the goal kick. Look again here, Ron. Yes, I know Shearer was protesting badly. You know, he, he badly wanted a corner for it, but it, uh, it uh, didn't seem to come off a Forest player. Yeah, no, it was off more indeed, so uh, quite rightly, it was a goal kick. And you know, at the moment, that's possibly the closest they've come to scoring, isn't it? I mean, that's for, for all the territorial play when they were banging it in the penalty box and things. They, they didn't really, nothing really has fallen for them yet. There was one from a corner which may have been harshly penalised. And that, but there hasn't really been a long shot. There was a long shot from Letizia, but nothing much. Whereas when Forest attack, you always get the threat. You always get the feeling something's going to happen. Crosby. <laughs> Let Cockerell clattering all over him. He's such a competitive player, Cockerell. And the free kick has been given against him. Taken quickly by Clough. I think too quickly. In fact, it will want that taken again. Gemmel. Awesome space here. Now can Kingsley Black exploit it. He most emphatically can. Southampton were torn apart then. No emotion on the face of the manager, but there's plenty of smiles and plenty of cheering now among the Forest supporters. Kingsley Black, for the second goal, has put Forest now comfortably in control. Oh, that was a well-worked goal. They passed the ball around, and then a beautiful through ball. And there's Black. What does tend to happen with the Southampton defenders when the ball's passed around? I'd like to see that from behind the goal because it does look to have gone fairly central into the net. There's that ball, lovely ball through from Gemmel. Takes it up, looks, 
scuds it. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how close it went to the goalkeeper that one. But um, that is something when, when they pass the ball around, when they pass the ball around uh, Forrest, they do tend to pull the Southampton defence all over the play. And they've deservedly gone in 2 think. Well, they were certainly found wanting then, Southampton. The half time whistle has gone. And Nottingham Forest have a two goal lead thanks to that second goal there from Kingsley Black. And it's put a different tone really on the final now. Southampton seem to be clawing their way back. Maybe not too many chances, but they'd had so much possession. They couldn't turn that into goals. And again there we saw the finishing power of this Nottingham Forest side. Kingsley Black with his sixth goal of the season. And it could be a pretty important one right on the stroke of half time. So Brian Clough going into the dressing room now and I would think he'll be a very satisfied man with the way things are looking at the moment. That's the half-time score here at Wembley. It's Nottingham Forest now leading Southampton by two goals to nil. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. 2-0 to Nottingham Forest at Carlsberg Man of the Match telephone number 0898 500 125. 0898 500 125. You've heard what Ron Atkinson thinks. Scott Gemmell so far certainly was a lovely opening strike, wasn't it, Peter? It certainly was. They play some super football, haven't they, Forest? And uh, as Ron says, they look like scoring every time they go forward. And uh, it's lovely to watch, to be honest. I'm sure a Southampton fan. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, here it is. It's a long throw here. And young Keane proves he's got a spring in his boots as well. Flicks it on, smashing. And what a finish. Absolute perfect volley for a young kid to watch. Lovely strike. Didn't try to overhit it. Lovely balance. And just struck it right there. And he couldn't have placed it any better. You dream about those, don't Absolutely. you? Catching them like that. I bet his dad dreamt about scoring because he never scored one like that. Look at it. Tremendous goal. Nobody at fault for that one, was there? No, you can't, you can't no. turn mark against that. That is, you know, sheer class. Um, the sort of things you do in training, probably four or five times a week, but once a season, and that's when it goes in. Oh, very good. If, well, if he was forward, not as Larry. Larry might not have done, yeah, that's right. Larry did it once in his career. Uh, Larry used to volley players like that. 2-0 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right on the stroke of half-time, Larry. Yeah, uh, again, the, 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 second, um, the second goal was a, a typical Forest, uh, forest goal. It was a neat little build-up. Ended up with uh, um, young Gemmell sees Black in open space and, and, and the kid takes it well. What I couldn't understand there, uh, well, where were the Southampton central defenders? What was happening? Well, they've got what? moved about a bit, haven't they, when Forrest have started playing well, their, I, their, their football or that football we, we, we know about. Well, and I think probably that's uh, the, general, the general thing, uh, Richard, that although Nigel Clough perhaps has not had a great first half, they still don't know what to do with him. The two central defenders, he's dropping deep, allowing Gemmell and Keane to go into that space. And the Southampton uh, uh, central defenders really don't know how to handle that. You mentioned young Clough, who we haven't actually seen that much of, but not no. too far wide, with a, an attempt, I think, set up for him by Teddy Sheringham. Yeah, he was. He's had a quiet game, a really quiet game. And uh, I think the ball comes across to Teddy Sheringham, and there's uh, a lovely little deft header into Nigel. And he chests it down, or takes it on his knee. You see the cross here from him and Charles, I think it is. Just knocks into Sheringham, outside of his foot, lovely touch. Nigel's already in his bike, nobody picking him up. There's a little one touch, and he just flips it wide. Great chance, and uh, un unlucky, unlucky. And here it is from behind. Yeah, smashing header down for him. Gives him the time to stop the ball, look, and have a shot. Look at that, just inches wide. Tremendous football again from, from the Forest, you know, that's lovely. Really, he would have been bitterly disappointed with that, um, Nigel, you know, that, that's great position for him to get in. And normally he would have tucked that way, you know, nine times out of ten. That's the other one that he couldn't tuck away. Mm. The, the early blow for Forest, of course, was losing the skipper yeah. Stuart Pearce. It was yeah. a, a clattering challenge. We held our breath waiting. And, and he was left on the floor. Well, I, I said that Cockrell would uh, go across there to, to block his runs, and uh, he certainly didn't disappoint him, did he? Look at this. I mean, it was a fair tackle, in all fairness, but you see, his leg was just stretching a little bit, and he's gone down awkwardly, I think, and he's obviously done uh, ligaments. We think it's his knee, Larry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looked that way. You know, Liam O'Kim has given him some spray treatment on there, but uh, as Ron said, uh, there would be a few wingers enjoying that tackle. <laughs> but in fairness, it was a fair tackle. Oh, I felt he should have come off earlier than he did. And perhaps, uh, you know, maybe he thought he could run it off as players tend to do. But I thought Southampton might have stuck the tizzy across there. Yes. 
uh, because he was limping for a good yeah. 10 minutes, yes, you know. Was, yeah. And I felt that, you know, Letizia with his twists and his turns and his flicks here and there, just might have given Stuart Pearce a real test. They've done well, Southampton, haven't they? They haven't had the reward that they should have done, perhaps. An effort from Letizia Arend. Lovely, mm. lazy volley. Yeah, well, that's him to a T, isn't it? This is his style of play. And here, here again, he just thinks it's a practice match. Takes it on the volley straight away. Great effort, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's long range. That's all they've had, Richard. They haven't really created anything near goal. They haven't really tested the young well, keeper, have they, Larry? He, on, on the one or two occasions that young Marriott has had to be caught into action, he's rushed off his line with a great lot of confidence. Uh, but nobody, as you say, Richard, nobody has gone up to him from these set pieces, corners, and give the little boy a, a knock and see how he can handle it, you know? <laughs> as perhaps Peter might have done in the olden days. But, uh, you know, the young lad is doing very well. He yeah. has done super. I mean, I, I agree what he's saying, though. Even from corners, they've had corners and, and uh, throw, long throws. They've not stuck anybody in front of him at all. They've given him a clear look at the ball, and as I say, no challenges at all, and I think that's the first thing they should have done. As yet, 2 0 half time to Nottingham Forest. The next live football here on Sky Sports comes from Scotland, the Scottish Cup semi final between Celtic and Rangers. That's live Tuesday night at 7.30 from Hampden Park. We'll be back here at Wembley after these. Stay with us. Welcome back to Wembley. 2-0 to Forest in the Zenith Data Systems Cup final. It's been a smashing match so far. You've put some money on there being more goals as well. Uh, just part of our live sport on Sky Sports today, 6 o'clock Rugby League, we've got Salford against Warrington, and at 8, NASCAR. The place to be, Sky Sports, it's great to have your company. There's the man of the match so far, let's go outside and rejoin our commentary team, Ron Atkinson and Peter Brackley. Thank you, Richard. So, Forrest underlining again the pedigree as the knockout specialist. As they start the second half, now then attacking the goal to our right. And that second goal was really a killer blow for Southampton, right on the stroke of half-time. Ruddock right there turning up at the back for Southampton. But I'm sure Ian Branford, their manager, has been winding them up again at half-time in the dressing room. That's when the managers do their stuff, of course. And it'll be a measure now of how Southampton's character stands as to how they respond. Ian Branford, who's had two successes here in the past, he was coach of Crystal Palace when they won it last year and also manager of Reading when they stunned Luke a few seasons back. I wonder, is it going to be third time unlucky for him? Way by Wassel. Cockerell trying to sweep it up towards Dowie. Clough, another intelligent layoff by him. Off goes Keane. Busting through the middle. Again, they've got four up so quickly here, Forrest. This is Crosby now. He's got Charles with him. Now then for Gemmell. Sheringham's, initially anyway, pulled away to the far post. Now he's tucked it through for Gemmell again. And Flowers just made it, and only just. Great build-up again, Ron. Yes, I've been wondering when that situation was going to happen. When, when the Southampton defence pushed to the 18-yard line and leave space behind for nice one-twos. Now, the Forest are the best in the country at this. Feeding it in, and then he just follows his run. Nice ball in from Sheringham, and he just doesn't fall into Gemmell's stride. But before the game, I had a, you know, I had a preconceived notion you might see quite a few of those. Sheringham. Again, showing his value to Forrest today. Two million pounds he cost, but he's been well worth it. But TCA now. He was surrounded, though, by red shirts. And Kingsley Black plays it out then for Forrest to Nigel Clough. The news of Stuart Pearce, incidentally, confirmation he has a damaged knee. And let's hope that it isn't too serious. Of course, he'll be thinking about the Rumbelows Cup, as I'm sure Brian Clough will be after the game. He'll be thinking about... Uh, for the Pierce is going to be fit in time for that. As I'm sure Manchester United will be. Crosby. Charles. Now that for Key. Got away that from Herlock. Misunderstanding that time though. Cockrell got up well. Now then for Kevin Moore. Just about kept his footing there. Off goes Kenner.
It's Clough for Forrest. Now, does he have the pace here to get away? Well, Hawke caught him. It was definitely a trip then by the Welsh international on Nigel Clough. He's not the quickest player, as I'm sure he'd be the first to admit in the first division, but of course he has such vision, Clough, and he saw the opportunity then. And Horn had to resort to illegal tactics to bring him down. Clough now, tremendous turn in towards Sheringham, and Ruddock just managed to get it away. We've just seen two instances there. You're right, Nigel Clough isn't the quickest player in the division, but I think nobody in the game thinks quicker than him. Twice when he burst through and uh, was hauled down, and then when he just let the ball run past his body and nearly present himself with a great opportunity. That was a tremendous pass as well then from Clough. He's really going through his repertoire today now. Charles Price looking to turn on the style in the second half. They have the cushion of the two-goal lead. And it really is a marvellous opportunity, Ron, for them to do exactly that, really turn on the style. Oh, very much so. I mean, as you say there, it looks as if the score could go to anything. From Southampton's point of view, I'd like to see a little bit more coming forward from the fullbacks. The fullbacks have been inclined to just pass it forward to stay at home. And consequently, the front players, Dowie and Shearer, haven't had an awful lot of support. Now, Sheringham's through. Is this another one? Well, I think he rather snatched at that, Teddy Sheringham. Again, Southampton struggling at the back. Yeah, well, you see, Kevin Moore, and, in all fairness, Kevin Moore and Neil Ruddock have, have been, as you say, responsible for keeping them or giving them some improved results recently. But as a pair, they don't look right, particularly at Wembley. Both left-sided, and neither quick. Prolific goal scorer in the past couple of seasons, Teddy Sheringham. Continuing at Forest, where he left off at Millwall. And he will be somewhat disenchanted that he didn't add to his tally of 20 goals. Yes, but he can't believe he's outrun anybody from about 40 yards out there. It was a clear opening then for Teddy Sheringham. Foul on Crosby. You see, I can't recall in the course of the game, apart from set plays, one Southampton cross from beyond the penalty area. Even uh, Letizia hasn't produced a ball from that area. Well, let's hope they keep their heads up, keep it going, and they can still make a game of this. The Forest are calling the tune at the moment, and they're producing some exquisite football. End of phrase, they're bang at it, aren't they? They had the little quiet period early on. Scored perhaps against the run of the play and have steadily grown and grown and grown until they're virtually bossing the game now. Sure. Cockerell. Now, what can Southampton build here? Hurl. Now that for Kenner. Rather hurried pass, though. Herlock has a lot to do. And Chapel was there. And he won't give up, that's for sure. Terry Herlock. A rather underrated player, too, I think, Terry Herlock. No doubt about his aggression, but he has other qualities, too. Now, here's a chance for Ruddock to hurl one in towards Dowie. And some pushing, so a free kick to Nottingham Forest. Southampton fans, understandably, rather subdued at the moment. There's been great excitement down on the south coast in readiness for this game. Long time since they were last at Wembley, of course, way back to 79. And there are two substitutes, Steve Wood and David Lee. So I wonder if they're going to play a part in the second half. This is gone. There's another scrap going on. It was Herlock involved again with Kingsley Black. And I think the yellow card is going to be produced for the first time today. And it's Terry Herlock who's been cautioned. Here we can see it again. Well, it was to say the least a wholehearted challenge from Herlock. Yes, I think, uh, I think Keith Hack was preferred to let him get away with kicking him, but uh, manhandling him, no. <laughs> Cockrell, oh, that's a foul, surely, no, play on, Walker, Ruddock, and then for Kevin Moore, 
Dowie, Nick Flickoff, Hurlock. Just too long, no. The idea was there, but he rather overhit the pass. Hurlock in search of Ian Dowie. Yeah, you were saying earlier about uh, Terry Hurlock about his ability. You saw uh, an example there of it. I think on the majority of surfaces at this time of the season, that, that ball would have just held in the corner for him. But maybe with the rain we've had, it's just skidded on, hasn't it? You're right, what you see, he is a far better player than he's given credit for. And confirmation there that Ian Dowie has indeed played at Wembley before. Albeit in the, uh, the Middlesex Cup. I think he scored too uh, for Hendon. Well, there's a rousing atmosphere now around Wembley. The crowd really enjoying this final. The Southampton fans are a little glummer than Forrest, it's true. But all the same, it's been a very entertaining game and it's such a good day out. The decision given to Forrest. Southampton really need a goal now to lift their spirits. To rekindle the fire, which they showed without question early on in the game. And as Ron was saying, if anything was slightly against a run of play when Forrest scored that first goal. Flags up, Shearer just straight offside. There can't have been too much in it. He doesn't look too pleased with the decision, but the linesman in fairness was right in line and had no hesitation in raising that flag. The other thing, of course, Peter, is obviously the second goal was uh, came, came at a really, really terrible time for them, didn't they? They were just, just threatening to maybe put pressure on and get back to one each. All of a sudden, they found themselves going in at half time, two down. Now, Kingsley Black. A useful cross for Sheringham. What a save that by Tim Flowers. How on earth did he keep that one up? Oh, uh -oh Sheringham must have thought he'd score there. Fantastic save by Tim Flowers. It was indeed, and as you say, a brilliant header. All credit to, Tim, uh, to Teddy Sheringham. He sent the ball in motion for uh, Kingsley Black to fly back across. And all fairness, he's 20 goals this season. When he was at Millwall, he used to get plenty of goals like this in the air. I mean, I would have said that was one of his main strengths. Now, at Forest, they play a slightly different way. So he's had to adapt his style. And he's still got 20 goals now. Sticking the ball in the air for him, you can safely say, there's an example, he would have had another, another half dozen at least. Well, that surely would have been curtains there for Southampton. But for tip flowers. So long the understudy to Peter Shorten at Southampton. So he learned his trade under the vest. And he's had a really good season, as I was saying earlier on. As he emphasised that. Now here's Kingsley Black. No way through this time. And Forrest win it back again. The a real competitive edge to this game. Roy Keane was onside. Sheringham and company waiting on the cross. What a stupid pass that was felt. Black, is this another one? It really is embarrassing when Forrest start passing, putting the passes together around the edge of the penalty box. Defenders just seem to evaporate, the seems, holes for everybody to run into. And all credits, all credit to the Forest players. They're playing well. The movement is good, the passing is clinical. But, uh, but there's not a great deal of appreciation from the Southampton defence at the moment. They just seem to be following the ball and just ball watching. And Tim Flowers is keeping them in the game. Shearer now. Still a long, long way back from here for Southampton. Shearer gets the decision. Well, there we are, shots on target. Just two so far from Southampton for all their possession in the first half. Ronick's come forward. And Shearer was in there too. Now Cockrell and Moore. And did that come off Walker? Well, it's still in play, whatever. No, it's not. Letizia, and Southampton needs some magic from Letizia in the second half, as Ian Bramford will be thinking, I'm sure. 
really not going Southampton's way at the moment. Ronick clears. Sheffield does the second for Forrest. Russell was underneath that one. In towards Shearer, but Walker comfortably able to clear. Now this is Kenner. On for Letizia. That's a good tackle. Nothing wrong with that at all from Russell. Perfectly timed. But it's a corner to Southampton. Mario having to fist it away. Hawk back in again. And on from Shearer. And young Marriott equal to the occasion once again. Well, he came for it confidently enough. Yes, he claimed that well. The one before where he was put under a bit of pressure, he didn't look over comfortable, but that one he certainly did. Now his Crosby breaking for Forrest. Three, four players sweeping forward now. This is Sheringham. Good tackle though by Kenner. Now Gemmell. Sharing him once more. Good skill. Kevin Moore struggling again. Sharing him. Black. Oh, Cosby couldn't finish. Keen. What a waste. It was, but you can see players now. You see good young players expressing themselves. They're enjoying this now. Big arena, good surface getting plenty of the ball and they're all on the game I mean that one there there's four or five of them could have pulled the trigger and Southampton being attacked from all angles here Kingsley Black with a neat flick Crosby couldn't get in there and Roy Keane might be <laughs> you'd have fancied that lad wouldn't you you'd have fancied Roy Keane to have been on target well he's not really uh, so consistent and his finishing is so tidy half an hour to go Nottingham Forest still in charge. So let's check on uh, Peter Osgood's thoughts now. Peter, how can Southampton get back into this game? I think the only way, Peter, is to bring the two subs on and not take anybody else off. But <laughs> <laughs> seriously, the, the, they really are under pressure. I mean, uh, they can't get anybody. As Ron says, all the crosses are coming in from the halfway line. And basically, I'd like to see Letizia go wide and let them play a 4-2-4 system, get players wide and hopefully they get crosses in the right, uh, right areas and they're certainly not getting there at the moment they're certainly getting a football lesson at the moment and unfortunately as a Southampton supporter it's, uh, it's painful to see but it's lovely football put your boots on Aussie and get out there <laughs> now a plus to Crosby again Southampton split wide open Flowers to the rescue what an afternoon he's having yeah, the incredible thing about it is they seem to have plenty of defenders back Southampton every time that Forest break and then all of a sudden one slight movement as Cluffy he measures that one in beautifully and the left back's well over covered there it's the, the vision and the sheer pace of Forest that's really been the undoing of Southampton and they've got no answer to it at the moment well he'll be pretty happy right club probably won't tell you so but he'll be enjoying this now in his 57th year and the old maestro still produces teams with such quality a TCA coming across to take the corner it'll be the signal for Kevin Moore to come up and Ruddock to They've got Dowie in there, and Shearer. But can they make their aerial threat count? Well, not like that, they won't. Well, I mean, that's how it goes when things aren't happening for you. I mean, he is as good a dead ball kicker as he is in football, Matt Letizia. 
And he really hasn't made his mark on this final in the way that Southampton were hoping. Now Ruddock. And his throws are like corners. Dowie couldn't get there. Herlock now. Ruddock to good cross to. And a goal. Fatissi. Now we've got a match on. Lovely whip ball over by Neil Ruddock. Well, that's a brilliant ball. That's, that's as good as a winger's cross. And there is the, there is a weakness that we said about the first. At the heart of the defence, they're not totally in the air. I tell you what, that was a terrific cross in from Ruddock. Oh, brilliant cross. And we had a first-class view that shaped it in lovely. 64 minutes. That's the time of the goal. And Southampton are back in their fighting. They don't need Peter Osgood after all. And it's got their fans singing now. We were just talking there about Letizia and his contribution. That's exactly what Southampton wanted. Everything is fizzing for Southampton now. I mean, I think you'd have, what odds would you have backed uh, Ruddock crossing for Letizia to head home? I think you might have thought the other way around once or twice. Well, it was a clinical finish by Letizia. 15 goals, and of course seven now in the Zenith Cup. Scored in every round. Charles. And suddenly Nottingham Forest can afford to relax no longer. Let's put a new light on the game now. With 25 minutes left. Charles with the free kick. drawing ball for that one here's the goal again Ron yes that, that's a brilliant cross there you see may, maybe a bigger centre half would have dealt with the cross but all credit great cross and Letizia going in the danger zone for possibly the first time today well Forrest have certainly had the opportunities to have finished Southampton off denied in no small way by the goalkeeping of Tim Flowers it's true but I wonder might they be made to rule those misses Bradford hopes so. Ronick again to hold one in. He's got Dowie on the edge of the six-yard box. There was Dowie. No, the whistle's gone. Keith Hackett again indicating there was some pushing. I think what else happened as well, Peter, this little bit of pressure that was brought upon, probably by a corner they had just before the goal. All of a sudden, I'm watching the young goalkeeper now. He seems to be getting a little bit edgy on his line. That long throw, for instance, he wasn't sure whether they're coming climb over his defenders or just hold his ground well, that's just the type of cross that makes life so difficult for defenders and for goalkeepers it was always curling away and Letizia met it so firmly <laughs> 2 one to Forest in the Zenith Cup final and what a rousing game it has been Far from over yet. Yes, the next the next ten minutes or so are going to be very very interesting, aren't they? How much momentum Southampton can get and how much composure Forest can regain, where they can just get back into their way of playing, passing the ball around, drawing the Southampton defence all over the show, sharing up to Crosby. It goes Charles. Bowers almost lost it. It squirmed away from him. Now he has Crosby. Though Keith Hackett has blown the whistle. <laughs> but he's enjoying himself. Tim Flowers. And what a match he's having. This will be interesting to see this one again. I don't know whether Forrest may feel uh, very wrongly penalised here. Price for a penalty, but no, no way. Oh, yes, yes. He has taken it out of the kick. Key. Referee's right, he's kicked it out of the keeper's grasp. But only just, and it was another let-off 
for Southampton. But Tim Flowers is having one of those inspired afternoons that all goalkeepers hope for. Dowie. Walker came thundering across. Surely the quickest defender in the business. Now here's Ruddock once more. Everybody back defending for Nottingham Forest. And Southampton haven't really left anybody back. Chettle, straight back to Ruddock, and that's a corner. Don't think he fancied that one off his right side to knock it back in first time. But this is the pressure, this is the sort of situation now that Southampton have been longing for all game. Building up ahead of steam. Again, they've got three or four players making their assault from around the edge of the area. And they all arrive then. Celebrated style. And what a contrast to the face there of the Nottingham Forest manager, Brian Clark. Kevin Moore, 33 years old, the man who must have thought his Southampton days were numbered. Returning to the club, and now he's equalised in the Senate final. He must have run close on 35 yards to get out that one. Now he started his run from well outside the penalty area. And it was noticeable that as he went, Forest, Forest players let him run by them. And I suppose the inevitable will be a, how much will be attached to the young keeper on that. There'll be people will have to ask questions about that. Maybe young Marriott should have dealt, should have done something about it. But first class header for Kevin Moore. Saw only the ball attacked it and all of a sudden what a game. 20 minutes to go. Kevin Moore, what a moment to score his first goal of the season. Well, this is some game, isn't it? What a great advancement, too, for British football. Rip roaring stuff, this is. Now, oh, Shearer. Russell got it away on then from Crosby. I think what it also proves is that uh, Forrest can't be doing with conceding too many corners or too many throw in situations from around their own penalty box now. It was an interesting ploy, wasn't it, that the tactic from the, from the corner. There were three or four players converging, really. Well, they, they just steamed in. You, you just see more steaming in now. To be fair, he, you know, his, 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 his leverage there, the height he's got there is tremendous. But the goalkeeper is very, very close to him and has got the advantage of uh, using his arm as well. It was a fair old header then. Yeah. From Kevin Moore. Now, Letizia. Southampton in full flow, at least Letizia was until he was set traffic to the ground. But they've got Forrest worried now, no question. And again, Forrest have had to pull everybody back to defend this free kick. Benali takes it. Charles away. Here's Clough. Always this threat, this danger of the counter-attack by Forrest. And they're sweeping forward now. Southampton desperately trying to get defenders back. Have they got enough back? Keen now. Walked down by Herlock, who's already been cautioned, so... He's got to watch himself. This actually is a little bit unnecessary, that from Terry Herlock. Probably the passions of the game because it looked very much as if his mate was going to pick the next defender here. Kenner was going to draw the, get the ball anyway. Now, Sheringham is there, and Clough. Of course, no Stuart Pearce to uh, thunder in those awesome free kicks, which have become so vital for Nottingham Forest. Maybe Chettle's going to hit one. He does. Flowers got down well. Southampton will be mighty relieved that Stuart Pearce is no longer on the field. Lethal, of course, on that range. Dowie on towards Shearer, trying to shake off Des Walker. 
again by Kenneth Shearer. Clawed out of the air though by Andy Marriott. That was a fine save. I think in this spell, Peter, I mean, you can't always tell what other managers would do. I think in this spell, I think I'd switch Chettle to centre back, put Wassel at left full back. Wassel's played there quite often, but it's they're definitely now it's they're getting they're getting well muscled out in the air. It was a classic header by uh, Shearer. Stuart Pearce, who now can only look on. He's such an inspiration to the Forest players. Indeed, uh, Brian Cuff says he's an inspiration to me. He's my man out there. Well, they were doing okay without him earlier on, but now Southampton have come battling back. I mean, at the stage that they got to 2-1, I was just thinking there, this might be Forest's best ever Wembley performance. They're playing so well. Well, suddenly it's all turned around. Shearer. Forest to Southampton to. Dow is offside. He's offside. I bet he enjoyed it anyway. Ian Bradford, twice a winner here before then. Maybe it's not going to be third time unlucky after all. Another high-scoring final, it seems to be. 4-3, of course, when Forest beat Everton here back in 89 4-1 last year when Palace beat Everton and don't forget that if they can't settle this after 90 minutes there will be extra time and if necessary penalties as well so stay in your seats I hope you're enjoying this at home as much as we are here Bonali 15 minutes to go Charles Keane slipped at the vital moment Dowie on for Herlock <laughs> Kenner on for Shearer Marriott's got to get there and he didn't do so too decisively now Herlock oh dear well he scored against uh, Chelsea I remember in the area final and the first class six haven't let it play to the whistle when the when the uh, challenge was put on young Marriott the forest defenders automatically stopped and thought it was a free kick the ball was a tantalizing close so it bet was within two yards of their their goal line and the referees waving play on he was under a lot of pressure there look here Yes, a lot of this seems to have stemmed uh, from the cross he missed just before the first goal. From then on, he's got increasingly edgier. And what happens, of course, people like Shearer, people like Cockrell will, will notice that. Dowie as well, they'll notice, they'll think, oh, the keeper's starting to wobble a little bit. And it gives them a little bit of extra encouragement to go in. So, some attention for Andy Marriott before he can continue. for the old smelling sorts too so uh, he's clearly a bit dazed and I think his confidence has taken a bit of a knock too in the last 15 minutes or so a bit quiet now at the forest end but my word there's a lot of noise cascading down now from the Southampton terracing the crowd nearly 70,000 in the stadium this all-seater crowd totally immersed in this final Ian Bradford who's seen his team respond so well in the second half Ronick slow Derry was there off the line by Charles Southampton corner it could have been far more serious for Nottingham Forest there but for Gary Charles not sure if that was going in or not but he was in the right place the TCA Barry Horn to tuck it back in again and this time safety away for the goal kick it's amazing and at the start of the game we thought uh, Southampton were going to give Forrest loads of problems with high balls, with free kicks, with corners, with, with long throws didn't, went 2-0 down all of a sudden built up some momentum doing this and now it's a continuous flow just seems to be one throw in after another, one corner after another and certainly from a position of 
virtually looking unbeatable. Forrester now very, very much on the rack. Well, that's the beauty of football. It's such an unpredictable game. And who would have thought that this one would have turned round in this fashion? Walker with Shearer. Now then for Gavel. Who seemed to have set Forrest on the way to a comfortable victory. Not so now. And the prospect of extra time now ever looming. Brian Clough, who's seen his team have mixed fortunes here, of course. That agony of losing the FA Cup final, but those two League Cup wins, the Simod Cup they won as well. A couple of League Cup successes back in the late 70s too. One of them against Southampton here. Letizia. Harassed by... Kingsley Black, but a Southampton throw. And they are now dictating this final. Russell. This is Kevin Moore. Now Cockrell didn't quite make it. Maybe Horn will. Dowie. Is magnificent. I mean, Marek Siskan through arguably the kitschy spell of his career. No one suddenly pulls out a save like this. When this comes back to her, like I, you'd have bet your life on this going in the net. There he can't quite twist round. Ricochets out, and there's her like, and he can rifle those. And that's a magnificent reaction. Well, he made a best of his last chance, Terry Herlock, but that one was a fantastic effort. And oh, what a stop by Andy Marriott to go in this pulsating final Cockerell up goes Herlock didn't find Letizia that's Keane back there defending now that's unnecessary young Roy Keane has done a trick he's opened the game up for himself could put a pass in and decides to be individualist and now he's, his team are under pressure again in an area where they've been proven vulnerable will they prove so again Ruddock with a lock throw. Chapel. Ruddock can try again. They've got more up. Score of that equalising goal. Dowie and Letizia now. Now Dowie's offside. He's offside. Hardly time to catch your breath here. And whatever he had to say at half time, it has done the trick. Although in fairness to Southampton, they certainly weren't outplayed in the first half. It was really uh, early on in the second when they seemed to be totally under the caution. That's right, and I just wonder, remember that move that where they absolutely ripped, where Forrest absolutely ripped them apart, and about three of them left it to each other, and they finished up with Keane, just sloppily, if you like, blazing wide. From that moment on, they seem to, to have grown, don't they, Southampton? Walker, the Southampton fans now goading those foreign forest by saying you're not singing anymore. I think they're stunned. They all seem to be going Forest way. But they reckon without the fighting qualities of the Southampton side. Shearer, good tackle though by Chapel. Now Black. And here's the break with Sheringham, but he's not got too much support. Crosby. He's gone into the penalty box now, he's sharing them, and also Black arriving, still Black! Well, was there a leg left trailing there? Keith Hackett turned away and said no. I think if he'd have gone down, I think he'd have got a penalty there. Had to be. Had I think be. he definitely got uh, dislodged by, by the defender. Well, Letizia. No walkers there. Black. Surely if he'd have fallen over there, that had to have been a penalty. Keith Hackett had a good, long, hard look and said no. Herlock's just, just upended Nigel Clough. And I can't help thinking, for me, 
Oh, this is the setup. Here we go. He yeah. attacks the heart of the box. And that's a penalty. To me, there's no doubt about that's a penalty. Well, you can see Keith Hackett there. Yeah. He was only uh, yeah. a few yards away, Ron. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think uh, Young Black made it a little bit more comfortable for him by not going down. But I think that's definitely a penalty. Ronak. Whose tackle it was, I think, on uh, Kingsley Black then. Russell won it well. Cockerell got it back again, though. Now off goes Benali. Letizia is in a lot of room over on the far side. They found him. Played it towards Shearer instead. Now Nigel Clough. Yeah, but I think a lot of this, a lot of the revival, you know, has been down to Terry Herlock. I mean, I thought his legs would start to go towards at this stage in the game, but he's given himself fresh adrenaline. He's pumped, he's driven his side forward. He's got tackles in on their midfield. And generally, I think he's generally inspired them back into the game. He's no youngster either. He's 33 now, Terry Herlock. Oh, and if it, has, if it had stayed at 2-0, maybe he'd have got a little bit tired. His concentration might have started to flag, but to be fair, he's picked it up and driven the game forward for them. Weary legs have been revived. Now, black for Forrest. Here's Chettle. A feel for offside. Wasn't given there. There was no flag from the linesman. Here's Sheringham. Black again. And Keane. Making the header, but not able to hit the target. Crosby. There's Keane. Perlock's back there. Rather clumsy clearance, though. Lucky to find Barry Horn in the air. Five minutes to go. Will one of these two teams snatch it, or are we going to need extra time? Perlock. A real inspiration Terry Herlock has beaten today for Southampton, especially in this second half. Gemmell. Now King. Forrest hoping to string their passing game together. But denied by Kenner, initially anyway. And now this is gone. Free kick to Southampton. Yes, there's no question that uh, that spell of pressure of corners and throw-ins and that that's... Uh, He's got Southampton back into the game. He's left for a shell shot. I mean, they're just slightly now. Looks, there looks to be signs that they're regaining a little bit of their composure. Too long for Shearer. Didn't reach Dowie. Croft getting himself into a bit of a tangle. And as the tackles came flying in, Keith Hackett awards the free kick to Nottingham Forest. Much improved in recent weeks in their league for Forest. May even have a chance of qualifying for Europe through their league placing. Letizia. Run it well for. Free kick to Forest. Taken by Walker. Is sharing them. Just around three minutes to go. So looking more and more now as if we are going to need extra time. What are your feelings now, Ron, if it does go to another half an hour? I think a lot will depend whether, in fact, uh, Forrest can, can get their composure back. I mean, technically, in extra time, their game should be should be better suited if it goes to extra time, that is. Um, but at the moment, they're still, they're still not quite back at, on the passing game, and he's getting brushed aside now, Nigel Clough. He's had to withstand one or two heavy challenges this half, uh, but it looks whether, he, whether he's had enough that slowed him down. Shearer's down injured at the moment, there's Benali, and that was a tired old cross then from Francis Benali. I'm just saying with Nigel Clough, you know, Peter, whether he's had a culmination of knocks, it seems wherever the ball's gone to him in this spell, there's been a blue shirt or two blue shirts even flying at him. No Hurlock's hit him once or twice. I think he's telling the referee about it there. Yeah. <laughs> but he's kept it going well, Keith Hackett. He's had to stop 
on some occasions of course no alternative really but uh, he's kept it flowing Ron oh very much so and I think oh Freddie I think it's been a super game it's been a lot of drive a lot of verb a lot of excitement and some very very good quality and some goals too which you've not been used to at Villa Park lately so we got one yesterday oh, we're on a roll now <laughs> Ninety seconds remaining now. The tension really mounting. Walker just managed to get a foot in. But it's Forrest back on the defensive now in these last few seconds. Barry Horn. That was Chapel's header. And it will enable Neil Roddick to test the Forest defenders once again. There'll be a few nervous defenders back there. Back in by Roddick. Here's Shearer. Well, he should have done better there. Alex Shearer looked quids in there to just head the ball back into the centre of goal and let, uh, let the rest of his colleagues put pressure on Marriott. Keith Hackett has now looked at his watch. So, any second now, we'll be heading for extra time. That's Ruddock. That was a casual back pass then by Letizia. Who doesn't like to make things look easy, does he? I don't think he'd regard that as casual. <laughs> Very much the norm, really. Dowie and Wassel together. Time for Chettle to clear. Maybe one last assault from Forrest, but no. It's Kevin Moore for Southampton. Popped up towards Shearer and Dowie. And he might just have sneaked in there. Not a corner. Dowie has constantly caused a threat. On any long ball, he seems as if he's, he comes from the side of the defender and invariably he's won most of them to keep the pressure on the Forest back four. Letizia with the corner. Moore's making his run in now. In goes before. Roddick and Dowie there too. And somehow Forest escape. But it's an awesome sight seeing those big fellas coming hurtling towards you. And Forrest were wavering again. Into time added on. Chevel. Yes, and what Forrest do, Forrest don't tend to mark players, they tend to just mark areas in the middle of the box, almost close in on their keeper. And in fact, it allows the likes of Ruddock and more free runs. And I think they'd be better employed to stick people against them and try and run with them and block their runs off a little bit. Clough. Here's Keane. Now then for Charles. Keane again. On for Gemmell. Sheringham looking for a shooting chance. In came Benali. Keane wins it in the air. But there's the whistle. The 90 minutes are up. And what a comeback by Southampton to... Brought Brian Clough's hopes of taking the trophy here in the second half, and it's not over yet by a long, long way. Another 30 minutes is necessary, maybe penalties too, who knows. Problem there for Neil Ruddock. Southampton will be hoping he's OK to carry on. Kevin Moore's equalising goal after Letizia got the first one for Southampton. It's 2-2. Join us again. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. So then, away we go with the first period of extra time. Southampton to kick off. Great excitement at Wembley. Keith Hackett waiting for the signal, and on we go. Letizia. What happens? What was that? But interestingly, Ron, we saw Brian Clough out there giving some advice to his players, and of course he was much criticised in the FA Cup final last season when he didn't do that. Yes, I mean... 
I know Clough is a one-off, does things. Um, I, I've got somewhere at the back of my mind, I can remember him doing with his, with his great side. I mean, obviously Larry Lloyd would know more about that than myself, but uh, I think when you've got a team of youngsters like he's got here, they look for him for something. Even if it's just to say, hey, lads, you're playing great, keep going. Well, he was certainly out there offering as much advice as he possibly could during that short break. Between the end of 90 minutes and the start of extra time. So let's see if the old cluffy magic works once again. I think his team were in need of a lift. Letizia. Oh, that's not a bad strike at all. Again, almost lazily then. Arriving at just wide. Yeah, it's amazing how much how much distance he can get not, uh, with his long passes as well. I mean, it's very little, appears to be very little effort in that. It's uh, perhaps not as close as we thought from here, but um, he does it with long passes. He sometimes just just appears to flick at the ball. He makes the ball travel 60 yards. Well, Andy Marriott will remember this day for the rest of his life, no question. The young goalkeeper who's come under so much pressure in the second half produced that stunning save from Terry Herlock but conceded two goals Southampton back on level terms and you really couldn't confidently predict which way this now might go No, certainly Forrest are only a shadow of the side that was playing for the first hour they were, they were, they were brilliant Atissier, that's good skill Still Letizia, trying to wriggle his way through. There were too many defenders there in the end. Keaton comes away with it. Charles now. Clough to Black. Confronted by Kenner, whipping over the cross. And Sheringham steered it wide. Didn't really meet it cleanly then, Teddy Sheringham. That was a good opportunity, that particularly for somebody like Sheringham, who is, who is very, very good at those sort of situations. Black's done well, he's bent the ball in well, he's stretching for it, it's not an easy chance, uh, but it, was, it certainly was a good chance. Yes, he looked a bit off balance to me there, but he'll uh, certainly put that one down as an opportunity squander. Benali, off goes Shearer, but the electrifying pace of Walker was equal to him. Up. Now Benali. It's a dangerous ball in for Dowie to contest with Marriott. And the goalkeeper stood his ground well. I think the free kick of it anyway for some manhandling by Ian Dowie. Rod up with showing on. Here's Black. Gemmel. Black once more. Sheringham. Southampton players looking for offside. Nothing given. And Roddick getting himself out of trouble very well. And trying to send Shearer on his way. But overhitting the pass. Clough threading it on. Apparently nearly linking up to that with Roy Keane, who reports the intentions of Nigel Clark. Dowie. Yes, there's a sign of Russell's frustration. He hasn't been able to get much in the air against Dowie. And I think he went for a ball that was never really his there. Dowie's been a bit of a thorn over the last sort of half an hour or so. He's won the majority of balls have been tossed up there and he's, he's always given the Southampton players a chance to play on seconds, on knockdowns. Ronnie could stay back, but Kevin Moore, scorer of that second Southampton goal, is hoping to make his presence felt in the air. Benali, it's gone the other way towards Shearer. A tackle, which uh, Fry's been lucky to get away with. Benali. To plant it once more into that 18-yard box and safely in the arms of Marriott. We find sharing. Now Crosby. Keen. And that's gone way up into row 97 from 
Kevin Moore. Crosby taking the throw. Southampton have left only Shearer upfield. Ruddock. Back it goes. Wassell continuing his run and tying it up at the back row for Southampton. Now let's get a word from Larry Lloyd and Peter Osgood. What are your thoughts now, chaps, Larry? Well, it's uh, it's obvious what the problem is. Forrest haven't got uh, anybody at the back that can handle these crosses. You know, Southampton are getting in there, they're putting pressure on the goalkeeper. How I feel they can get out of that is not defend so deep. It seems to me as though they're falling back and allowing Southampton to get players into the uh, danger areas. Now, Peter Osgood, what about Southampton's revival? And, uh, well, they're certainly continuing in that vein now, really, aren't they? Yes, they certainly have. They've done very well. Uh, hopefully, they just haven't uh, sort of worn themselves out in the 90 minutes because they did work very, very hard to get back into it. And as you say, like, Herlock and uh, Cottrell and Horn in midfield really won the game from because the three guys went missing. Gemmell, Keane and uh, Cluffy. And uh, they've certainly turned the game well for Southampton, to be honest. And is Larry Lloyd still marking you pretty tightly down there, Peter? Don't, Peter, don't worry. <laughs> Now, Letizia, but Dowie at the far post, Shearer in the middle too. That was an important clearance by Wassel. Letizia. Cheeky touch from Letizia. On with the cross, Dowie. Now, wake up, Forrest sweeping forward, Crosby. And there's the irrepressible Terry Hurlock. It seems strange, I mean, to take Larry's point up again there. I mean, that has been a Forrest trait for years now, to defend very, very deep in their box. Particularly, you know, bearing in mind they haven't got the likes of Tyler playing in the middle of the defence. And it's sort of our recollection when, when it used to be Burnsy and Larry was, Cluffy always used to like to try and get the centre-half to push up and squeeze and not let the opposite uh, strikers turn on the ball. So we'll see if he's had a comp you know, complete change about in tactics. Gemmel. This is Black. Another dangerous cross in. Oh, that was a brilliant ball. Yeah, but that was a brilliant ball. Away. Two men marking him, didn't even go past them, just opened himself up enough and then drifted the thing in. That's possibly on one occasion when Keane hasn't been attacking the box for headers. Chapel, his cross this time. Oh, that was Keane with a header. And Flowers with the save. But that one came at him a little bit sharp, didn't it? You can see Chapel, he's dug it out and... There's an offside call, actually. So yes, the, uh, the flag was up anyway, yeah. so it wouldn't have counted. Do you want a cough speak, by the way? You're losing your voice there. It's the excitement of it all. with oceans of space out here and he'll look to attack Kenner Bill for handball Keith Hackett says no and Kenner rather wearily whacks the ball into the stands below us Southampton are a bit inclined to do that though Peter they are inclined to tuck their fullbacks in very narrow and in fact give a lot of space in the wide position I mean Black Black actually started to look more of a threat than any of them and Forrest, as we saw there, have managed more shots on target, but not so many lately. That's well read by Keane. And I'm sure he had one eye on Terry Hurlock. Do you know, for a, minute, I, for a minute, I thought he was going to leave his leg out against him. <laughs> Walker with a foot in ahead of Shearer. Fascinating confrontation between the two. Yes, in all fairness, you'd have to say that uh, Walker's won that one at the moment. At the moment, Gemmel. Now this is the space they allow. And Black's getting more and more into the game. What's happening as well? He's dragging Letizia back. 
And it's Horton now for Southampton. Arrowing his pass in search of Shearer. So Gary Charles had to be on his guard. It really is ebb and flow. Yes, I think what Forest need to do is get the game back to a steady tempo. If the game is steady and nicely patterned, that's going to suit them far more than it will um, Southampton. Southampton need a very, very high tempo game. This is Roddick. Walker with a free header and a delicate touch off from Clough. Sheringham will try to link up with Clough again. We've got a second chance. Keen now. Now oh, that's good tackling back row by Grip Cockerell. Very competitive final. And some very enterprising football throughout. Brian Clough, who must have thought the cup was won when Forrest scored that second goal. Had chances to have added further ones too. But he reckoned without the revival, the qualities of Southampton in coming back as they have. And if they keep playing like this, Southampton, I'm sure they'll hang on to their senior status too. Walker. That was Keane. Now then for Sheringham, Moore was there with him. Chettle. Now, can he get his cross in from here? Well, there was no Forest player able to react. Now, Letizia from this deep position here. He's the man who can do untold damage. If Southampton can release him. <laughs> Wassel and Dowie, getting rather silly. Oh, here it is. Little fracas that. Uh, I think Dowie was the chief offender. Yes, if anything, it should have been a free kick, shouldn't it, towards Nottingham Forest. But at least it shows they care. Extra time, they're being hard at it now for, you know, they're going to do two, and a, two hours. And yet they, uh, the passions are still running high for him. Well, it was 3-2 when they met in the League Cup final back in 79. I wonder if it's going to be the same score today. Forest, of course, the winners on that occasion. Gemmel now. And his dad Archie was playing in that final. Slips it on towards Sheringham. He had a little bit of space to turn then. Clough. Now Keane. Whistles over the top. 13 goals from Roy Keane this season. And he wasn't too far away from number 40. No, he's, he's give that one the full gun. What's, what's gone well for Forrest in extra time is the fact they've been able to sort of reduce the number of throw-ins and corners. At the moment, Southampton haven't been able to get that pressure on, but they were applying so much in the last half hour of normal time. Jeff Kenner. Shira with Walker, who wins that particular aerial duel. Now Kenner again, on for Hurlock. Snapping away in midfield, Shearer's pass, on goes Hurlock. He's got Letizia in there. Dowie waiting at the far post, who wanted the cross. Oh, if Hurlock could have just dug that one out, it wasn't easy for him, but he could, if he could have just studied up to the far post, Dowie was completely unmarked. Yes, he got away then, Dowie, and he looks furious. If only Hurlock could have found him, that would have to have been a third goal for Southampton. Now, Letizia curling over the cross. In comes that posse of blue shirted players, and Kenner drives it wide. <laughs> the 
the end of the first period of extra time it's still 2-2 it's still such a tight contest yes I think Forrest showed signs in that period of uh, getting back to their rhythm didn't have to didn't have to put up with much pressure apart from the very last the very last seconds of the uh, period So, Ron, would you venture now to suggest which way you think it's going to go? <laughs> I'd take a gamble on Forrest, to be perfectly honest, particularly if they can keep giving Kingsley back plenty of the ball. I think their way of playing is sometimes better suited to, to go over a long distance. Well, they certainly have the passing game and the vision to open up defenders, uh, defences. And as players begin to tire, Maybe more opportunities will come their way. Herlock. He hasn't shirked a single challenge all afternoon, Terry Herlock. Now Black. He's got some space here. Sheringham cutting in. On goes Black. Well tight tackle. Vital one too from Ruddock. Yes, it was not too dissimilar a situation to the one we thought he should have had a penalty with, but uh, I think Black could have gone a little bit more positively then. The TCA arrogantly sweeping it on. Just too long though for Shearer. Now that's twice he's played that ball, uh, Letizia, in extra time. Good ball, favouring the strike. It just ran away a little bit. But he's still playing now. He's playing somewhere. He's playing most of the football from his own half of the field where in that, in that pressure period he was right up in the thick of things in, in attacking areas. Kenner will allow that one to run out. It's a Southampton throw. Shinner. Out jumped there by Walker. It goes Barry Horn. Then Cockrell. That's Dowie taking over. Ran straight into Wassel. Clark to Sheringham. Crosby is the wide man here. Finale finally up for Southampton. Just to recap, for anyone not too sure of the rules here, it will be penalties, a penalty shootout, if they can't settle it after the 30 minutes of extra time. Shearer trying to get away, and it was quite clearly obstructed there. But this is a long very for the indirect free kick. Shearer was the player impeded. Now Ruddock and Moore at the moment are outside the 18-yard box. Sharon almost got there. In goes Moore. Dowie! And he was there again, Marriott. Moore's attempted cross. I think that came off, Charles. Indeed it did. But the defiance of Andy Marriott saved Forrest once more. That came off Gemmell there. Yes, then you see all the big men compiling in just to keep the ball in play. Good reaction from Dowie and a very, very good save from Marius. But still, Southampton piling on the pressure. Letizia. Caught off the line. Dowie's header, I think. Chip back in. <laughs> the danger passes. Yes, but they do give themselves some problems, don't they? By staying in there, by not marking, by just inviting the big Southampton players to run onto them. Cross comes Walker. He's not happy about something, does Walker. I shouldn't think quite close to uh, happy about his team's defending at the moment. No, but they I think, really are. I think that is a tried and trusted policy. It's the one they stick to. It's not something they're just they're just doing today. It's the way the Forest do defend anyway. Letizia. 
is Hall. Spreads it wide now then for Kenner. Didn't reach Dowie. And as Cockerell's shot rebounds off the TCA. Referee Hackett blows the whistle for a free kick to Forrest. I would think that's what Des Walker's been talking about to him about. He thinks there's probably a little bit of pushing going in off the ball. Ruddock for Southampton. Up towards Shearer. Shackle though finds Kingsley Black for Forrest. So drama continuing right to the end of the long road to the Zenith Cup final. Of course, we started off our first live game was 6 all. We had extra time and penalties then. I'm not suggesting this will be 6 all, but we've certainly had a lot of excitement. And maybe the extra drama of the penalty shootout still to come. Who knows? Here's Keaton now for Forrest. Off goes Charles. Good run! And that was only inches away. Yes, I must confess, we're... When he, when he hit it, I thought that was going in the roof of the net. But that's some brilliant link-up play. Brilliant little ball in, he's joined from the back. Gary Charles, that inspired run, the England international. Who hasn't always been certain of his place in the Forest side this season. Tissier couldn't get away though from Chattel and Clough. Don't know whether that's a deliberate thing, whether they've just changed it for the last part of the game, but uh, for most of the match, and I see he's gone back with him now, Walker's been man-to-man -man marking with Shearer and leaving Wassel against Dowie most of the game, but for, for a little period just, it's been the other way around. Well, here's Walker now, marking nobody. And able to clear without too much discomfort. Moore with the saving tackle, and a forest throw. Just looking round at the Southampton team, they appear to have a number of guys who you would think were pretty useful penalty kickers. Obviously, Letizia, I mean, he never seems to miss one, does he? I don't think he ever has in professional football. Charles, Roy Keane. Crosby to Charles. Beyond sharing on, but Black is there to sweep it in. It's Kemmel. Kemmel the scorer. I've got a horrible feeling the Southampton boys may feel there was a touch of offside about that one. Oh, we'll see again from the replay. Oh, he's taken it very, very well. Very sweetly accepted. And held his nerve, to be fair to you, because he had plenty of time on it. He had plenty of time to panic even. It's a shade fortunate there because the ball just bobbled a little bit ugly. I'm not going to get a good view from there, but he looked to be in plenty of space behind the defence. No, he's not. That's a great finish. Six minutes to go, and he had just stayed onside. The ball floating over Black and Sheringham, and it was Gemmel. To restore Forest lead and set the Forest masses cheering again. Scott Gemmell with his second goal of the game. 3 2, just as it was in the League Cup final of 79 between the two. So once more, Southampton to cut from behind ten goals at two in this game Crosby lost it there again is a long long ball and whoa what a finish by Gemmell Five minutes left. Can Southampton do it again? 
Well, will this time Forrest hold on? In many ways, you know, that was a better goal than his first one, if not a spectacular. I mean, the first goal, he, he just had to hit it. A reflex action, instinct. Nobody would have blamed him if it had cleared the crossbar by yards. But that one, he had plenty of time on it. And he kept, everybody kept looking at it and wondering what, what he was going to do with it. He had plenty of time to whether to pull it down or whatever. But he's held his nerve, he's held it brilliantly there. Clough, happy to kick it anywhere now. It's all or nothing for Southampton. Into the last four minutes. That came off Dowie. It's a forest throw. There's Kemmel, on from Black. Ian Bradford, well, there's nothing he could do. It's up to the players now. They've rallied before, and they'll be hoping they can do so again. Otherwise, the Zenith Cup is going to Nottingham Forest. Winners of the competition when it was the Simon Cup, back in 89. That was a tremendous final against Everton. So is this one. I think this is the best. I think this is the best one I've seen of these. Because there's been a, a very, very good cutting edge to the game. Sheringham. Time here for Bernali as the minutes tick away. Again angled up towards Shearer. Russell almost lost it before Hurlock kept flying in. Forrest are almost there, but not quite. Shearer. Well, I thought that was a foul, but uh, Keith Hackett was a lot closer than me, said no. So did the linesman, much to the indignation of Alan Shearer. Now, what is Kevin Moore doing there? That was rather foolish. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, he dwelt on the ball a long time just outside the box there. And I think Kevin Moore thought he had a genuine chance of sneaking in there. All right, the, the last yard, he looked terribly aggressive, but, I mean, Roy Keane was standing on the ball, the keeper's a yard away from him, with no apparent desire to do anything with it. And prior, prior to that, Peter, Keane had, st had been stood with his foot on the ball for ages. I mean, Moore has run virtually. I, I think Moore has run about 25 yards to try and make a challenge there. So, some more attention, some more treatment needed for Andy Marriott, whose heart will be pumping away now. I should also think there was a little bit of frustration, because as you so rightly said, he looked at all the world as if Shearer had been obstructed there. Well, I must have been, I found that position rather strange, but uh, Keith Hackett said no, but as I said, he's a lot closer than us, so we give him the benefit of the doubt. He was for the penalty, Peter, but there's no doubt it was a penalty. Into the last minute now. Gary Charles. That was Kevin Moore, who's deserted his defensive role now. It was he who scored the equaliser back in normal time. It'll be a long, long kick upfield from Tim Flowers. On from Dowie, Walker only partially away, and then it was scrambled clear by Wassell. Southampton now, captain the Forest half. Yeah, they're going to make them go the distance, they've thrown everybody forward, all the big guns are in there. No prizes for guessing, it'll be a long, long throw. From Neil Ruddock. Didn't find Dowie. Huge roar of relief from the Forest fans. Chettle. Quite happy just to fuck the ball up to Tim Flowers. We're now in injury time. On from Moore. And again, Walker accelerates across. 
is more going to wait uh, for Roddick he is to take the throw everybody's back for Forrest everybody's up almost for Southampton certainly only Tim Plough's back at his own half here's Roddick's throw Clough away Finale this is Kenner Time's almost up. Roddick with Horn. Horn's prepared to scrap for it still. Now that for Hurlock. Letizia to Kenner. Needs a good cross here. It goes Shearer and Dowie. And Horn too. And Keith Hackett has blown the whistle. A free kick to Nottingham Forest. But he knows he's been in the final. Andy Marriott. Well, as soon as let nobody down. As soon as this ball's in flight, there's no danger what's going to happen, is there? They come flying in like the Arapaho there. Keith Hackett has looked at his watch. It's almost all over now. And well, that's it! And Forrest have won the Zenith Cup. And that's the reaction of the old master. A big kiss for Liam O'Kane, one of his assistants. And there's the hero for Nottingham Forest, Scott Gemmell with his two goals. But just listen to the applause ringing around Wembley for this superb final. Forest are the winners, but all credit to Southampton for the contribution that they have made in this absorbing contest. Disappointment for Southampton, but my word, they have played their part. As Brian Clough walks away, always the unpredictable man. And he is now leaving while his players take the accolades. Dejection on the faces of the Southampton players, of course. jubilant scenes among the players of Nottingham Forest who seemed to have the cup won then had one hand yanked off the trophy by Southampton's comeback and then Brian Clough seeing his team snatch it again towards the end with Scott Gamble's second goal but a memorable final run yes as I've said on, on commentary I think it's the best of these I've seen Excitement, cutting edge, some quality play and some out now fighting spirit from uh, Southampton. It was a game with everything. Brian Clough acknowledging the support of the Forest fans and he's getting a rousing reception too in return. Ian Bradford, the first time he's been in charge of a team that hasn't won that at Wembley. And it tasted success as a manager with Reading and a coach with Crystal Palace. This time it's not to be, but he can be very proud of the way that his team have played. As Glenn Cockerell now leads the Southampton players up the steps. And they're getting an excellent response from the crowd here. They really did make a match of it. They'll be feeling pretty tired now. As they trudge wearily up those steps. Ben Cockerell applauding the fans, followed by Neil Ruddock. Just shaking hands with initially Joe Salari, the president of the Zenith Data Systems Europe. Losers, but much to be proud of. Alan Shearer, who was so tightly marked by Des Walker. Tip Flowers, heroics in the Southampton goal. When it seemed Forrest were about to run right. And as the Southampton players make their way down the steps, Forrest prepare to receive the trophy. Beaming smile from Scott Cavill. Stuart Pearce there too. 
Lee Glover with the uh, tracksuit top on there who didn't feature at any stage in the game it was Steve Treffler of course who came on for Pierce and with Stuart Pierce not having completed the game I think indeed it's uh, Des Walker who will receive the cup for Nottingham Forest followed by Andy Marriott what a Wembley debut for him Des Walker one of the best defenders in Europe I'm sure coveted eyes on him again today from the top clubs around the European scene being linked of course with moves to Italy or perhaps to Spain at the end of the season but for the moment he's very much a Nottingham Forest player as he holds aloft the Zenith Cup Nottingham Forest with their fourth trophy in this recent spell so much success at Wembley Teddy Sheringham who had an excellent game for Forrest Darren Mossel in his first Wembley final and every Forest player played his part especially this man Scott Kemmel no wonder he's beaming and how proud his father Archie will be of him just as Brian of course is delighted with the contribution that his son Nigel has made We'll be back here in two weeks' time to do it all over again in the Rumblers Cup final. And let's hope that, uh, from Forrest's point of view, Stuart Pearce is there to play for them. Now, Scott Gamble has been, I think not surprisingly, named the man of the match. So there'll be a presentation to him by David Hill, the head of Sky Sports. And there he is. David Hill just passing over the Man of the Match trophy to a delighted Scott Gamble. Scott is talking with Nick said to me, half time it's a bit, I never scored in front of their own Forest fans in the first half, so I said to him I'd try and get one, and I did. So it's just the way it goes, I suppose. Marvellous occasion for you, with your father on the bench, seeing you score twice. Yeah, I don't think that's got anything, it doesn't make it any more special. But... My granddad's watching me for the first time ever and to, for it to be at Wembley and score two goals is just unbelievable. When Southampton came back from being two down to two all, did you still think you were going to do it? Uh, obviously, a bit of doubt comes into your mind, but you've just got to try and get it behind you and hope for the best. And that first goal you scored, tell us about that, it was a truly spectacular effort. Well, in the warm-up I'd been shanking them all over the place, so it was just nice to hit one sweetly. You can have a quick look at it here, actually. Wonderful finish. Yeah, I don't think I've ever scored one like it. Here it comes again from a different angle. Cross in there from Gary oh, This Charles. is the second one, yeah. yeah. As it's coming over, I don't know whether to try and control it or not. And eventually, I just thought, I'm going to hit it, and it went in. With two marvellous finishes. Scott, thank you very much thank indeed. Cheers. Thank you. And elated. Scott Gamble, man of the match, hero of Nottingham Forest, and then now receiving the applause from the crowd. There's Walker, the man carrying the cup. I wonder if he'll be around to uh, carry any more cups in the future. Well, it's still the Rumbelow's Cup. If uh, Stuart Pierce doesn't make it, maybe Des Walker will be captain that day. But they'll be that Pierce is out there, of course. And they certainly missed him. But in the end, all has come right for them. And Nottingham Forest have won the Zenith Cup by three goals to two. Well, Scott Gamble, the Sky Sports man of the match. You can vote for yours. The number, 0898 500 125. The Carlsberg man of the match, that's your choice. 0898 500 125. Some nice prizes up for grabs. Motorcycling, I'm afraid we can't show you the highlights now of the Japanese Grand Prix. 2.30 tomorrow afternoon is the rearranged time. Nottingham Forest have won the Zenith Data Systems Cup. We'll hear from the camp after the break. Here at Wembley with Sky Sports, there's a very happy young man. Scott Gemmell, whose two goals helped Nottingham Forest win the Zenith Data Systems Cup. This afternoon, 
We'll get reaction from the camp in a moment or so. Just to underline what I was saying, the other side of the break, no motorcycling now. We were going to show you highlights from the Japanese Grand Prix. Extra time means we can't. 2.30 tomorrow afternoon for that now. More live sport at 6 o'clock. Rugby League, Salford against Warrington. Followed by live motorsport from America at 8. The NASCAR 500. It's a great lineup here on Sky Sports. Larry, I think, at the end of the day, justice was probably done. Well, I think so. Over the two hours, I think Forrest uh, thoroughly deserved to win. There was a spell uh, in, the, in the second half where, it, where in fact, you know, when, when Southampton got, got themselves back into the game, I was getting a little bit worried. By the beginning of the second half, it was men against boys. Up until that point, it was men against boys. Southampton, you know, might have come, come and set up here, well, that's not a cup of tea. <laughs> Brains <laughs> against broad. Yeah, exactly. And class, class had out. It certainly did. I was going to say, I, I was getting a bit embarrassed in the second half because uh, they were just taking the mickey really out of Southampton. They were playing s s superb football and it, uh, it was a marvellous month to watch it, unless you're a Saint supporter, you know. Yeah. But uh, Southampton, in all fairness to them, they rolled their sleeves up and exactly what we said, they got crosses, well, they got corners and throw-ins. They were always going to be dangerous from them and obviously they, they got their two goals yes, back no, quite no, deservedly so. To Southampton when I say that because... They, they really did battle their way oh, back absolutely. and made a real game of it for us. They certainly, they? as you say, the, the boys in midfield, uh, Cockrell, Hurlock and Horn, battled and battled and battled and really got them back in the game. And then I think the only thing was it was, it was too much for an extra time. The, the, the point was with these... Inside the dressing room, Larry. Oh, right. Sorry to interrupt no you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Don't often get inside post-match like this, do we? Yeah. There's Walker. Where's your shirt, son? First two Forest goals. Let's have a look again. Scott Gemmell. Well, Wonderful first. Well, Keen gets up first of all tremendously well there, and there's Gemmell just just a hook volley into the into the top of the net. No Southampton players to blame for that. It was very good. Here's the second. Yeah, back. Uh, he's made a great run through. Look, just uh, had one touch and then picked his spot. But as again, no defenders near him at all. Uh, you know, bad marking as far as I'm concerned on the edge of the box. They should have closed him down a lot quicker. This is Southampton's response. Yes. Great ball this. I think it's the best cross I've seen all season. Tremendous cross from Ruddock and as Ron was saying, Big Ron was saying, from the, from the right area. And there it is, just a simple header really. He's only got to get his head to it on target. That's a simple goal for him. And look at the leap here, Larry. You'd have been yeah, proud well, of this. It was, it was around this, or a few minutes before this, that yeah, he's, oh. up, he's up, um, up above the crossbar, in fact. Mm. But it was about that time, or just before that time, that Southampton realised that the high ball into the, into the centre of the forest defence was causing, causing problems all afternoon. And Scott Gemmell's winner. Well, he's never going to hit two sweeter volleys in his life than this, let's be fair. So you hit one a season, he's hit two in one match. Tremendous finish, and uh, he had a great game, the lad, didn't he? It was he? a fabulous match, it, it really was. Marvellous game. Let's go downstairs to the dressing rooms again. I think uh, Nick Collins is with Andy Marriott, the young keeper. Nick. Well, we're down here in the dressing room with Andy Marriott, the forest keeper. Very well done. How did you enjoy your first uh, trip to Wembley? It was superb. Couldn't believe how good the fans were. We were just pleased, obviously, in the end of the day to get the result. Fairly high spirits in here. Were you nervous at all? Um, yeah, especially uh, waiting for the gap to announce the team. I think that was the most nerve-wracking thing. Um, not knowing until we got on the bus who was actually going to play. Uh, when he said I was playing, it was just fantastic. Well, we're getting a bombardment in here, but uh, tell us about some of the saves that you were forced to make because Southampton really came back at you in that second half, didn't they? Um, yeah, they did well second half. Uh, we weren't complacent at all when we went out after half-time, but we just didn't seem quite to get in the game. Um, and their keeper was absolutely fantastic. Early doors in the second half kept us out. Um, then they got the first goal and things went from there really, we were under a bit of pressure and was just glad sort of to get through to extra time. Well you've got a, a cut chin and a bit of blood on this jersey but nothing to stop you uh, enjoying the celebrations? No, no nothing at all, it was just a fantastic experience. Andy well done, thank you very much indeed. Stuart, would you, can we have a very quick word with you? Well, Stuart Pearce getting the invitation to come and talk. I'm sure we'll be back downstairs in a moment or so. Let's go. Here we are. Nick Collins. Stuart. Mixed feelings, I guess. The injury, yet Forrest did go on to win. First of all, how is your injury? Uh, well, it's a bit sore at the moment. I'll probably know a bit more next week, you know, what the problem is. But do you expect to be able to be back here in a couple of weeks' time for the uh, Rumblows final? That's something I really couldn't say at the moment, you know what I mean? Just obviously I'll get in tomorrow morning and find out what's going on. What was it like for you to have to sit on the bench and, and watch that game unfold when you'd expected obviously to be playing a, a direct part in it? Yeah, it, it was very difficult, you know, especially when sort of Southampton would come back into it too all. But as I say, all credit to the lads, sort of, you know, they survived when Southampton put the pressure on and they come back with a bit of character and nicked the game at the end. 
for the neutrals, that must have been an absolutely marvellous game of football. But uh, when you're sitting on the bench like that, I should think it gets fairly tense, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the uh, worst place to be, really, you know. All credit to the lads out there. They don't, they're magnificent, you know. We took the trophy home, to be fair, at one stage. Our back was up against the wall. Well, you started the day as the captain. Were you tempted at the end to have, to have gone up to pick the cup up, or, but you let Des go up in the end? Yeah, well, Des come up to me and said, you know, go and get the cup, like, you know, it's, it's over a whole season, this cup competition. I said, look, hang on a minute, I've, I've sat out of the game for sort of two hours, like, you go and do it. So, all credit to him and the boys, that you know, I'd rather send them up the stairs first, because they're the ones who've won the game before us today. It was a great game, though, wasn't it? No doubt about it. From our point of view, yeah. Stuart, thank you very much indeed. Lovely. Thank you. Cheers. So much excitement up here. Half the gear stopped working, but uh, you'll excuse this for a moment or so. The young boy we were talking to, the, the, the goalkeeper, uh, Peter, Andy Marriott, he will remember this game for the rest of his life. Yes, he certainly will. He's made some great saves, let's be fair, and uh, he's shown a lot of character. We said they didn't test him early on, but uh, they certainly tested him later on. The crosses came in thick and fast, and here's a header from Shearer, which he takes very comfortably, very nicely. Great positional play there. Here again. He makes a tremendous save. In all fairness, though, it goes straight at him, but Herlock gives us a mighty crack, and it's a, a reflex save for Strogler. Certain goal. Larry. Yeah, but in, in, in fairness to those two incidents there, they, they, they moved away. The first defenders moved out and allowed him had a bit of space to see the ball. That's a great save. Right? Yeah, that's brilliant. You know, his reflexes on two occasions were marvellous. A very courageous performance, because for half an hour, he took a real battering, didn't he? Well, we said early on, didn't we? We said yeah. that we, we, they should test him out. As I say, they didn't disappoint him in the last half an hour because they certainly tested his character. And he came through it great. That's I thought, right, though. but I felt, I felt, Peter, that really he didn't get an awful lot of help from the Forest Central defenders. I mentioned it earlier on. They, they kept backing onto him, backing onto him. And you know yourself that a goalkeeper likes space to come and get the yeah, ball. Sure, sure. But instead of having two uh, Southampton forwards to, de to deal with, he had also two Forest yeah. defenders. So four people he's got to climb above. So they didn't really help him there. Forest have won this one. Great match. A little bit quiet in there, Peter, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly seems that way. I don't know where the boss is. Perhaps he's, uh, that's the reason why. Perhaps he's still in there. But, uh, yeah, they do seem very quiet, very subdued. Carlsberg man of the match. We've chosen ours. It was Scott Gemmell. If you want to make up your mind, you can call on this number, 0898 500 125, and get into the hat for tickets. Match against England against Brazil later in the season, and that's, that's the top prize. Now, the next live football here on Sky Sports is Tuesday night, Celtic against Rangers. Scottish Cup semi-final from Hamden Park and that's followed by Milan against Juventus. So a great double bill of football coming up on Tuesday. We're here until six o'clock. Suggestion perhaps for your vote in the election. He'd love it, wouldn't he, Brian Clough? More to come after the break. Welcome back to the first Wembley final of the season, all sorted out. Nottingham Forest 3, Southampton 2. It's Mother's Day, of course. Some proud dads around, nevertheless. Imagine if your son had scored a couple here today. Archie Gemmels did. He's with Nick Collins. Well, Archie, this must be one of your proudest moments, seeing your son Scott score two goals at Wembley in a cup final. Oh, I'm just delighted for the club, as I say. We uh, came last year and we were rather disappointed at the FA Cup after it. But this makes up for it a little bit. I thought overall it was... a. Uh, Superb game, both teams gave everything they had, and uh, as I say, we run out the winners in the death. To lose Stuart Pearce so early on in a game like that must have been a real blow, though, for Forrest. It is, because Stuart's uh, one of the main men in my team, you know, he drives us on, and even when things are going bad, he's always there, encouraging, keeping things going. Great captain, great player, but uh, sometimes we just got to overcome these things, and I think the lad's done that. Scott's contribution, he was named man of the match for his two goals afterwards. You looked as if you leapt in the air when the third one went in. Oh, very much so, as I say. It was uh, not just because it was him, it's just in general, you know, we knew, knew we were getting towards the end of the game and uh, possibly we were only looking forward to the penalty kicks. And I think here's a chance for you to have a look at uh, Scott's efforts here. Here it comes. Yeah, just come across. That's the winner. Well, he shut his eyes, he told me. He shut his eyes? Yeah, no, as I said, it was a very hard chance to take, but one of these things here are going as they go over the bum. This is a great day, though, for the Gemmell family, isn't it? No, well, it's a good day for everybody concerned. You know, not just Scott and myself. It's good for everybody at the club. We like winning things. And uh, as I say, we've got one. We've got Manchester United in a couple of weeks. We'll need a little bit of rest after that, but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Probably fancy coming back yet again, because you've been regular visitors here over the years, haven't you? Very much so. As I said, I'd done a little interview with Hughes Lazella on in the week, and we would like to come every week because it's the best place in the world to come 
fans are terrific, atmosphere's terrific, and I say you get good football, so we would come every week if we could. Archie, thank you very much yeah. indeed. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> they all but do, don't they? Nottingham Forest to a back, of course, for the Rambolos uh, next month. Now, this one wasn't the only game taking place today. We had our camera in the dressing room a little earlier of uh, the old Wilsonian 7th eleven. if you remember. They were playing AFC Goat and Compass. Uh, game's finished. Let's go back and rejoin the cat. <laughs> Don't ask me. Do you know, the first half was the second worst 45 minutes of my life. The worst 45 minutes of my life was the second half. I blamed the ref for our plight. I remonstrated with him at half time. I said, pardon me, ref. He said, who is it? I said, it's me, the cat. I said, no, I'm over here. I said, I wish to make an official complaint about you tying your guide dog to my left hand post. He said, why? I said, well, firstly, I think one of the players with a misplaced sense of humour has swapped your Labrador for a pit bull terrier. He said, no, Vinny always looks like that. He has trouble with his glands. I said, in any case, I don't think Vinny likes cats, which gives me a bit of a complex. And secondly, I think he had a curry last night. He said, that aside, how may I help you? I said, will there be extra time? He said, only if it's a draw. And you are 6 nil down at the moment. I said, you're not counting all of them, are you? I said, after all, four of them went in off your dog. Well, I will gloss over the second half, except to say that I do not feel we have made the best use of our first leg home advantage. Being 14-1 down could trouble a lesser side than ourselves in the second leg, even if, in this competition, home goals do count double. On a brighter note, and modesty almost forbids me to reveal this, on my way to the dressing room, our generous opponents have nominated me for their Man of the Match award. Well, this is the cat, Sky Sports, Wimbledon Common Extension, off to the goat and compass. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. That's the first leg of the Sinclair C5 Intermediate Invitation to Charity Cup, first leg. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Gamble, our man of the match here. Well, Larry Lloyd and Peter Osgoods. Uh, yours, you can vote on 0898500125. That's the Carlsberg man of the match, and we'll let you know who's won that this coming Friday in Sky Soccer Weekend. Enjoyed yourselves, gentlemen? Yes, uh, ex for me, excellent afternoon. Forrest, I thought they would win at one stage. I was a little bit worried. You know, Southampton put a lot of pressure on. Uh, but they came through, rightly so, I, th I think. Obviously, haven't enjoyed the result, but enjoyed the game. Yes, very much. Uh, five goals. You can't wish for more in a final. And uh, extra time again, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't so far away from the penalty. No, we were weren't. We? No, that's right. We had a chance if we get to penalties. <laughs> we? Southampton had a great chance. I got to be, yeah. But it was a great match, wasn't it? Great entertainment. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, you know, football benefited this afternoon. Uh, there was seventy thousand people out there. You know, there was an awful lot of noise. I think everybody enjoyed it. Obviously the Southampton people are not going to be very happy at the moment driving south, but uh, you know, as a football spectacle, as a neutral, you would enjoy it. That's mm. English football at its best. Saints have got to get their minds on this relegation battle now. They have. Well, I mean, it's just saying what Larry was saying, there was two completely different sort of games of football. One was a lovely flowing method, and the other one was that long ball into the channels, and uh, unfortunately for Southampton it didn't pay off, but I think for football it was a good, yes, advert, and uh, yes, they've got to get their minds on the relegation, they've had some good results recently, and hopefully now they can roll their sleeves up and get out of it. Enjoyed your company, gentlemen, very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Richard. Well, I'm uh, <laughs> well, He's a great loser, yes. Peter, isn't he? Mind you, he's got used to that this season. <laughs> <laughs> Auto Glass Trophy, let's tell you about football that's uh, up and coming here on Sky Sports. Stoke City against Peterborough, that's live the 6th of April, a Monday Southern Area final first leg. The next live football, of course, is this coming Tuesday. That's Glasgow Celtic against Rangers, the big battle, and it's live from Hampden Park. That programme kicks off at 7.30, and we follow it with Juventus and Milan. Hope you've enjoyed it, the first Wembley final of the season. Couple of goals from Scott Gemmell, smashing match from all of us here at Wembley Stadium. Thanks for your company, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye for now.